Uh, good evening. I'm glad to see that uh, nobody had anything better to do tonight. It's all good to see you here tonight for the uh, April 25th meeting, uh, the Board of Commissions meeting, and, uh, and I truly welcome everybody here. This is it's a great example of uh, democracy in action. Uh, tonight, we're going to, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm really pleased to, uh, to introduce the Reverend Glenn Ray, who uh, comes from my, my church community, Mount Bethel, to lease the invocation. And then, and also Commissioner Ott's church. Um, and then, then tonight we have a little bit something different for the pledge. Um, there was an incredible ceremony um, a week ago Friday uh, for the opening uh, of the, uh, I'm sorry, it was on Sunday. Sunday for the for the Braves weekend, uh, there was an incredible ceremony there for uh, both the Pledge of Allegiance and a truly outstanding young lady who sang the Pledge of Allegiance. So after, <laughs> is she here tonight? I hope so. So what we're going to do is going to have Reverend Glenn, uh, Reverend Ray come up and lead us in the invocation. I'm glad to have you tonight, Glenn. And then we'll uh, we'll see this video of the Pledge of Allegiance and the Pledge of, and the uh, and the Star Spangled Banner. So please rise. Thank you for allowing me to the honor of praying for you tonight. Let us pray. Our divine and gracious Heavenly Father, we offer our thanks to you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon our community and our nation. We come to you this evening not only to give thanks but to ask for guidance, patience, understanding and a spirit of cooperation as the commission goes about its work. The people of our county has entrusted these men and women to do the work of the community that affects the lives of every citizen of this great place in which we live. Father, we ask for your wisdom as they discuss and make decisions on the agenda that is before them. Lord, I pray for each commissioner individually that you will protect and keep them. Thank you for calling them to this task and may their purpose be for the good of all. Father, we also pray for our nation Keep us in your care and safety. Bless us and give us generous hearts as we work at helping others and making our country a better place in which to live. We ask that you bless our officials both locally and nationally. We thank you for the freedoms we enjoy today and help us never to take them for granted. Bless our servicemen and women across the world and keep them from harm. We pray for peace in our hearts and peace in our world. We offer our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. your attention to the outfield as the Boy Scouts of America carry out our nation's banner. this time, please stand and face the flag and join the Atlanta Braves in the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Boy Scout Samir Joseph from Troop 1011. Scout salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Two. Ladies and gentlemen, to honor America, please remove your caps and join in the singing of our national anthem performed by nine-year-old singer from Atlanta, Angelica Hale.
think we should go ahead on that high note and adjourn the meeting. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to uh, ask the board to uh, to consider a motion to uh, to uh, to amend the um, the agenda to insert an appointment in here, and I'm going to go ahead and and uh, get to the front on this late breaking news because I know everyone's been waiting on this. So why not why not do it right up front here and start this meeting on the right foot? So I uh, I'm going to ask for a member of the board to make a motion. Uh, to to insert uh, in tab 16, item number three, the agenda to recommend the interim appointment of county manager uh, uh, Rob Hosack and the transition plan for county manager um, Mr. David Hankerson. Second. Any discussion? Any discussion? Call the question. And it passes five to zero. So it'll be inserted to tab 16, item number three for all of you. All right. And Pam, make sure I get to number three when we get to 16, about three o'clock this morning. <clears throat> Just I hope that's a joke, too. <clears throat> okay. Um, tab number one, uh, we're going to start with tab four tonight, obviously. I'm sorry, tab five, I apologize. And we have a number of uh, presentations to make. And I'd like to start with uh, Commissioner um, Cupid. Do you mind going first? Yeah. Terrific. Thank you. Good evening. Tonight I have the honor of recognizing some champions within our community from McEachern High School. So if there's anyone here from the Women's McEachern High School basketball team, I'd like to have you join me up here and your coaches. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. This presentation should be easy for me because I've been making it almost every year since I've been a commissioner. That's how many years that these young ladies have won the state championship. In fact, this year, they won their fourth title for the state. And yes, that's worthy of applause. I made the mistake one year of saying that they won the class AAAAA championship. I learned next year to shorten that to the class 6A championship. But I made the mistake in trying to hand out individual certificates to each of these young ladies. So what I'm going to do is read one. I'm getting better every year. Maybe next year I'll do even better. I'm going to read one certificate to the coach. And I'm going to give her the honor of recognizing the young women here and also do something distinct. Usually we just see your beautiful faces. But I would like for you all to share your experience. Because this is an awesome honor, particularly if any of you have been there the whole Oh, man, come on. <laughs> We know you have more going on off the court because some of you ladies are actually like um, top honor roll students. That's what I remember from you being here as well. So they not only excel on the court, but in the classroom. And chairman, don't hide behind there because I think it's fitting for our chair. They're just blocking the view. Okay. <laughs> so this certificate goes to the coach, um, Ms. Phyllis Arthur. The Cobb County Board of Commissioners congratulates you on successfully serving as head coach of the girls basketball team and leading them to the Class 6A championship. Under your superb guidance, the team has won state titles four years in a row and five out of the past six years. 
With a record of 26-6, the Lady Indians became the first girls basketball team in almost 40 years to 4 p in the state's top classification. You were also named Girls Coach of the Year for the state's top three classification by the Atlanta Tip-Off Club. This is a testament to your expertise, leadership, and the difference you have made in all of your players' lives. We thank you for your many contributions to better our youth and community. Thank you so much for all of your effort. You're welcome. You're welcome. There you go. Yeah. The and I'm going to read one certificate to the ladies. And in fact, um, I will have the coach distribute them to you after um, today. But again, I really want to hear from you because this is a remarkable accomplishment. Um, so the certificates read. The Cobb County Board of Commissioners congratulates you and the McEachern High School basketball team on winning the Class 6A championship. Coming back from an early deficit against Norcross, your team was able to clinch its fourth straight state championship with a record of 26-6. The Lady Indians became the first girls basketball team in almost 40 years to four-peat in the state's top classification. We are so proud of your team's commitment to excellence and wish you the best as you continue your academic and athletic career this, this 25th day of April. Thank you so much for your hard work. Yeah. And we also have an assistant coach here with us today, and thank you for all of your work with the team. So with that, I'm gonna give the coaches an opportunity to speak on uh, your observations this year. And um, if there are any of you, I'd like to in, have each of you also state your name and if any of you wanna speak about your experience, we'd like for you to do that too. Okay. Okay. Uh, good evening. First, Ms. Cupid, we gotta make one correction. It's seven A this year. <laughs> <laughs> Next year she'll get it right when we come back. They moved us up another classification because of the size of the school. So we were like the top 50 schools in, in the highest division. Um, well, like my, these young ladies have done a lot of work. As you can see, we got one that's in a, still in knee brace. We lost three players during the season, a senior, starting senior who's a, um, a center, our backup center, and our starting point guard to season-ending injuries at the last of January 1st of February. And these young ladies still stood out and did what they had to do all the way across the board. And I did their GPA, and their overall GPA for the VARS is 3.4. Yeah. The overall GPA for the JV team is 3.4. And the overall JV, um, ninth grade GPA is 3.2. So not only are they athletes, they're student athletes. So they, we have a great group. They're very well behaved. Um, and I'm just happy to be their coach. They make me look good. Okay. Hi, I'm Myra Camise. I'm David Hankerson's niece. <laughs> um, I have the pleasure of coaching under this young lady. She is, inspires me every day to give my 100% and to be the absolute best coach that I can be to these young ladies that I call my family. Um, we always have a saying, and it's family earned, not given, and we work very hard for everything that we have earned this year. So congratulations to my team, especially congratulations to a world-renowned coach. Okay, hello. Okay, uh, hi, um, I'm Jewel Smalls. I'm in 11th grade. This is my first year playing at McEachern High School. Um, it was a great honor to be playing underneath Coach Arthur and playing with these girls that I'm standing with today and the ones that who couldn't have make it today. Um, it was just a great experience to be in my first championship and to actually win it. Um, I'm Demaya McPherson, I'm a junior. Um, being on this team taught everyone a lot, taught everybody how to be tough, you know, how to go through things later in life. So it was really a blessing to be on this team. Uh, I'm Melissa Smith. I'm 11th grade. This is my third year uh, on the varsity team. And just playing this year really taught you to, like, keep your head in it and to stay strong no matter what. 
Hi, I'm Chanel Wilson. Um, I'm in 11th grade. I've been on the team for three years, and I got hurt, but it's kind of a bittersweet taste because, like, it gave my, my other teammates a, uh, yeah, an opportunity to, you know, <laughs> uh, get a chance to make their light shine. So, yeah. Um, I'm Simone Oliver. I'm a senior, and I broke my ankle in January. So my ended, my season ended early as well. But um, my teammates stuck in there and kept their heads up the whole time. Um, our coaches motivated us the whole time, kept us in it, never gave up on us, and leaded us to a win. Hi, I'm Quanicia Morrison, AKA Q. And I'm in the 12th grade and I'm going to the University of Georgia. And this is my second year at McEachern. And coming to this family, I knew I'd be in good hands up under Coach Arthur. And it's been a great experience. It took blood, sweat, and tears to get the job done. And we kept our heads up and got it done. Hey, my name is Daylin Craig, and I'm a freshman. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kyla Carpenter, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Lindsay Wilby. Um, I'm in 12th grade. I'm going to Texas Tech University. Um, I was at McEachin for three years, and Coach Arthur really taught me to Take every practice as your last, because you never know. And work hard every day, and because you never know like when it's going to end for you. So yeah. <laughs> Honoring these ladies here tonight is not enough. There are some communities, they would have had a parade down the, the, the town square. I mean, this accomplishment is just remarkable. Um, but the city of Powder Springs will be honoring them, I believe, Saturday, May 6th at an at a outdoor event. So there's another opportunity for us to let your light shine in front of our whole community. And we appreciate you being a bright spot for us. I've heard that a number of you are juniors and also some of you are first year students. So that means we expect you to come back next year for the fifth straight consecutive win, right? <laughs> All right. Thank you. You're welcome. And Commissioner Cooper, you can just you can stay right there, and I'll make the next announcement, all right? About what you're, you're just going to and stay right there, all right? So now Commissioner Cupid will, uh, uh, is going to present a certificate uh, to Drew Williams and Camille, Camille Mascareñas, of, I'm not joking, of Robot Ninjas. Amazing. <laughs> yes, For if you may join me and any family members that you have with you, please join me. Now, we highlighted what is in um, our bright future um, for our teenagers within um, South Cobb, but I'm excited about this group that I have here with me today. I learned about them by seeing um, a newspaper clip on these two um, young people who are here in front of us. They had a remarkable, a remarkable accomplishment that makes me excited and gives me hope for my children. And I'm gonna read with you their accomplishment and why we should all be excited. The Cobb County Board of Commissioners congratulates you, Drew, and also you, Camille, 
on winning first place for the state of Georgia and second place internationally in the six to eight year old age group of the 2017 Wonder League Robotics Competition. <laughs> I'm so excited. Now that's already sounds impressive, but wait till you hear these numbers. More than 5,000 teams and 20,000 children completed a series of five missions by writing the code to navigate robots through a series of obstacles. And you two rose all the way to the top. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We are extremely proud of both of you, your achievements that you made, and we wish you the best as you pursue your dreams. And Ms. Camille, this certificate is for you. We understand you want to be both a surgeon and a veterinarian, right? And Mr. Williams, we understand that you have a bright future as a robotics engineer. So we thank you and honor you tonight. Now, we're gonna take a picture soon, but I cannot highlight these young people without highlighting their family because it would not have been possible without their parents recognizing this opportunity and recognizing that their children could excel at this opportunity. I put a lot of emphasis on their parents because these children are homeschooled. And so for these, yes, we can clap for that. Some of us feel like we need an applause for sending our kids to school, let alone having to homeschool our children. But you've had to see that there was opportunity to um, push your children to participate in something like this at such a young age. So while I wanna give your kids an opportunity to speak about how exciting it was, I wanna give the um, parents an opportunity to speak about how you saw this opportunity and ended up pushing your children towards, towards this. So Drew, would you like to share about your participation in the competition? Um, it was great. I I really want to become a robotics engineer because there's lots of things you can make and I want to make the world a better place. Well, in the first place, I am not homeschool. I am King Springs. So why I want to be a surgeon, it's because I love helping people in all kinds of different ways. Thank you, Camille. Well, what I did read a little bit, you could tell me more about the parent who saw this opportunity and how the other student became involved and just how, how you saw this as an opportunity for your children. I saw it on Facebook. <laughs> I, they, he got the present for Christmas, and I saw it on Facebook, and I thought it'd be right up his alley. And you know, we've known each other for a number of years, and um, <laughs> and so Drew and Camille have known each other for a very long time as well. And so I just put the t two together. They work well together. They really balance each other out. So oh. sometimes we get in fights. <laughs> Sometimes, well, some, a little bit sometimes, we don't work well together and we don't have the same thoughts. But then we like get the problem into a solution and then everything is okay. Yeah. <laughs> and everything is certainly okay. So thank you guys, thank you parents. Did you want to share anything about your children's uh, Lisa, participation? Lisa, I want her to come up here. <laughs> I know, tell me about it. And that's for all of us tonight. With all the problems that we have, we are gonna find a solution and in Cobb County, everything is gonna be okay.
you know. So with that, why don't we huddle up and take a picture? Thank you, Commissioner Cupid. Uh, hey, Camille, my, my uh, computer wouldn't unlock this morning. Uh, can I get your cell number? Uh, I'm going to have Commissioner Weatherford now uh, a, uh, to accept any kind of contribution from the Cobb County Master Gardeners. Thank you, Chairman. I feel a little lost up here. Uh, not 6'4", and I don't know anything about robotics. But uh, I think it just gets better and better. Tonight, we're going to hear a presentation from our master gardeners and what they've done for the county. Before I call them up, let me ask, uh, read a little uh, information. In 1980, University of Georgia Extension Service established the Master Garden Pro Gardener Program in Cobb County. Since then, a minimum of 50 volunteer hours are required during the first year and a minimum of 25 hours each year thereafter remain active. Currently, we have over 250 active master gardeners, many of those with a 10-year lifetime status. They have done many things for Cobb County, and I'd like Hope Warren and Renee Lemon to come up and tell us a little bit more about it. Are they here? And then we'll call them up. There you go. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm Hope Warren. I'm the director at the University of Georgia Cobb County Cooperative Extension, um, and it is a program funded by Cobb County and the University of Georgia, and we work very well together. Uh, we have an organization, or we have a group of volunteers called Master Gardener Volunteers that Renee Lemon is going to tell you a little bit about in a second, but we have a couple of volunteers up here, but we have lots of them out there, so if y'all don't mind standing up. We have, we have a great group, um, and I'm going to pass the mic to Renee because she is our Master Gardener Coordinator in our office, and she's the one that's actually going to make the, the presentation, and she will acknowledge our uh, agriculture um, agent as well. Thank you. Thanks, Hope. Um, good evening, everybody. I'd like to introduce Rolando Oriana. He is our A&R agent um, at Cobb Extension, and the beautiful green turf that you saw during the... Uh, Initial um, presentation, you can thank Rolando for that because he had a big part in the, the turf at the new stadium. So we're real proud of him for that. Um, so I'm the coordinator for the Cobb County Master Gardeners. Um, we are here this week because it is National Volunteer Week, and that's what we are. Um, the Cobb County Master Gardeners have been around since 1980. This is a group of very dedicated volunteers uh, who, when they sign up to become a Master Gardener, they're signing up to be an educator. Um, UGA Extension trains them so they can go out and share their knowledge with uh, their community. In 2016, the Cobb Master Gardeners volunteered 20,967 hours, which um, comes up to $23.54 an hour, and they volunteered 75,515 miles, which is 56 cents a mile. And when you do all that math, it comes up to a whopping 530,000 $889 is what the Cobb County Master Gardeners in kind gave to Cobb County in 2016. <laughs> so this evening I just want to brag a little bit about the Master Gardeners and let the commissioners know how lucky I feel and how lucky I hope you feel to have these people in our community um, going out and teaching in our schools. Um, and at garden clubs, at senior centers, 
Um, we're all over the place. Um, so I want to present this check of our in-kind dollars to the commissioners for our work in 2016. And I would like to introduce um, who's up here with me tonight are um, Susan Dossey, Joanne Newman. We are, these are two members of our board, um, the Master Gardener Volunteers of Cobb County. Yes. Um, so we train every January, February, and March with the Metro Counties. And you can go to our website, either the Extension website or CobbMasterGardeners.com, and you will uh, be able to find the application if you're interested in becoming a Master Gardener. Every few years, we do two trainings. Um, we just got finished doing the January, February, March. Um, and there's a special lady that just got finished with the training. I think some of our commissioners may um, <laughs> love Love one of our new master gardeners, Judy Boyce, who made 101 on her final exam. Um, you have to study really, really hard. 101. We have five bonus questions. Um, but this summer, we are um, also training because we're putting teachers, Cobb County teachers, through. So we are helping 54 schools right now, and... Um, We've given them grant money, and we've helped them build raised beds, but now we need teachers to be master gardeners because knowledge is power. <laughs> so we've got 18 Cobb County teachers that will be going through the training this summer. Uh, yes, and um, the commissioners, are, uh, I gave you a little um, pamphlet about our 2016 Yes, and in there you will see two free complimentary tickets to our garden tour. Um, and for those that would like to join us on our garden tour, it is Mother's Day weekend, May the 13th, and you can get tickets online at, on our website, cobmastergardeners.com. Thank you. Thank you. Let's have uh, all the Master Gardeners stand up one more time, and let's give them a round of applause back there. Thank you for all you've done. Anybody else do better than 101? I just want just thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. I don't know where that goes. Oh, sorry. So give me a get the check. I thought we already had the check picture. Oh, I'm a cash and I'm right. Okay, Commissioner Weatherford, you can stay down there. And uh, our next uh, uh, event of the program is to recognize Zavon Williams from the Kennesaw, Kennesaw State University. Zavon has got all sorts of problems. Thank you. Zavon, I know you're out there somewhere. It gets better and better, and I keep dropping things. Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Vaughn Williams, come on up, sir. Many of you may not know, or you should know who Vaughn Williams is. He's the athletic director at Kennesaw State University, and we're here to honor him tonight, and I'd like to read a proclamation in his honor. Kennesaw State University Director of Athletics Vaughn Williams was recently honored as the Athletics Director of the Year by the National Association of Collegiate of Directors of Athletics. Pretty impressive. This high award highlights the efforts of athletics directors at all levels for their commitment and positive contributions to student athletes, campuses, and their surrounding communities. And whereas Williams is leading a transformation at KSU since his arrival in May 2011, he has formed the KSU Athletics Association, oversees a rebranding of the Department of Athletics, and included new athletic marks, signed a partnership with Adidas to be the official apparel provider of the owls 
and added women's lacrosse and football in the university's 17th and 18th intercollegiate sports. And a signature moment during Williams' tenure came in the fall of 2015 with the launch of a Division I football program, which we're all very proud of. The Owls have won 14 games, been ranked in the top 25, and sold out all home games over the program's first two seasons. Williams has brought in several impressive coaches, including Brian Bohannon as a head football coach, Al Skinner as a men's basketball coach, and Agnes Barrento as women's basketball head coach. Baronado. What you said. <laughs> Williams' tenure has also seen the Owls capture 17 conference championships and make 19 appearances in NCAA postseason play. Putting an emphasis on the development of the total student athlete, his team launched Owls Championship Initiative. This program invests in the lives of student athletes academically, athletically, mentally, vocationally, and spiritually. His team has also cultivated relationships with the business community and fostered long-term sponsorship agreements, generating millions of dollars in revenue. Now we, the Cobb County Board of Commissioners, do hereby recognize Vaughn Williams for being named Athletic Director of the Year by the NACDA. We are proud of you and you continue to enrich Kennesaw State, community, and Cobb County. So thank you for your commitment to excellence and student achievement this 25th day of April, 2017. And I believe, uh, I'll let you say a few words, and I believe you have some people in the audience that may want to come up here. No. They don't? No, don't uh, Aiden, Lacey, and Eileen, is that, did I get it right? Yes, well, why don't you at least stand up? His family's here somewhere. All right. I see one, two, three. All right. Say a few words. Well, I just want to thank uh, Cobb County, and uh, thank you, Commissioner and Chairman, everybody. Uh, you can't do what I do without a community, what you're seeing, the young people we just visited, robot, robotics and everything, a high school basketball team, probably need some of those players on my team. But uh, yeah, yeah, but what we're about is impact in lives. And when you get an opportunity to impact lives, that's what we do at Kennesaw State. So it's pouring into lives, creating the leaders of tomorrow. And hopefully everybody in this community is proud this is an unbelievable community. There's no place like it in America. I've been a lot of places. We just need to continue to do the great work we're doing. So thank you, respect the privilege we always say, and it's an honor and a privilege to serve this community in Kennesaw State. I have to say a few words. Um, Vaughn is a shining example of an athletic director and a community um, his character in the community, and he has done a phenomenal job at KSU with the inaugural year of the football two years ago, the past two years, a winning record. His, congratulations on your um, accomplishments and the ladies' basketball team as well. And I'm surprised you didn't recruit. I, all I heard was... Uh, UGA and Texas Tech, what happened? You need to get some of those lady owls, those McEachern girls to be lady owls. So you go talk to them afterwards. But thanks for all you do. Um, it's an honor to serve with you on the football committee and the, the things going on at KSU. And we're here for you to support you, and we appreciate you and all you do. Yeah. Thank you, Vaughn. And uh, one last thing that above all the honors and uh, things that you get, uh, I am most proud that I can call you my friend. And we've been that way and continue to be that way, sir. I look forward to our breakfasts. Yes, sir. Let's give another round of applause. Thank you. Okay, if I could have the commissioners join me down front. And uh, Mr. Hankerson, if you'd join us, please. We're going to do something a little bit different here. Um, we're going to honor Mr. Hankerson tonight. As you know, he's retiring uh, at the end of this month. And I'm going to have uh, 
Pam, maybe read the, the whereases and the therefores. It's a little long, but I think that given his 24 years of service as a county manager, and more than 30 years of dedication to this county, uh, we can be a little patient to hear the incredible achievements of this incredible young man. Whereas David Hankerson grew up in Burke County, earning a Bachelor of Science degree in agronom agronomy from Fort Valley State College and a Juris Doctorate from the Woodrow Wilson College of Law. He served our country bravely in the U.S. Army from 1967 to 1970 and moved to Cobb County in 1973 where he and his wife Janet raised four children. And whereas Hankerson began his illustrious career with Cobb County government in 1984, serving in many leadership capacities before being appointed as county manager on February 1st, 1993, assuming responsibility for the supervision of all county affairs and implementation of policies established by the Board of Commissioners. Whereas under Hankerson's outstanding and consistent management, our county continues to serve as a leader for the state, region, and nation, as evidenced by our AAA national bond ratings and the successful opening of SunTrust Park and the Battery. And whereas he is a certified public manager, leadership Cobb alumnus, a graduate of the Regional Leadership Institute, and a member of the Association County Commissioners of Georgia General Government and Natural Resources and Environmental Policy Committees, Hankerson has served on many civic and service boards, including the Cobb County YMCA Board of Directors, Tommy Nobis Center, Shorter College Board of Visitors, and the Southern Polytechnic State University Foundation Board. And whereas Hankerson is one of five distinguished Georgians to receive an Excellence in Public Service Award for 2004 from the Carl Benston Institute of Government at the University of Georgia in partnership with Georgia Trend Magazine. And whereas he has earned countless other awards, including the Cobb County Management Award, the Dr. Carter C. Woodson Freedom Award, the NAACP Citizenship Award, and the Cobb Chamber of Commerce Mac Henderson Award for Outstanding Community and Public Service, the Citizen of the Year by the Marietta Daily Journal, and the Man of the Year by the Cobb Chronicle. And whereas in 2009, the Cobb County Board of Commissioners bestowed the honor of naming the Cobb County Safety Village Education Building after Hankerson. Now, therefore, we, the Cobb County Board of Commissioners, do sincerely thank Mr. David Hankerson for his unwavering commitment and strong leadership on behalf of all Cobb residents. His intelligence, professionalism, integrity, work ethic, and dedication to county employees has greatly benefited our community over the past 33 years and for decades to come. We wish him all the best in retirement. This is the 25th day of April, 2017. May I be, uh, be the first uh, to begin this long procession of accolades that will be uh, marked this week. And it is uh, with deep respect and great humility that uh, I award you and present you this proclamation on behalf of the county. And, uh, and we all know in our hearts that you're never going to retire. <laughs> And I know the board members want to all say something here. Thank you, Mr. Hankerson, for your many, many years of service, but also for your confidence and trust in all of us and your mentorship and just being a faithful servant to this board and to this county. We couldn't be here without you. Thank you. I just want to say thank you for all the hard work you've done. We've probably spent more time together in the last three months than we did the last nine years. And I think as a, as a team, we uh, work really well together. And, and I just want to thank you for all the, the hard work and effort and made Cobb County shine on April 14th. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Well, I'm probably the newest one up here. Be nice. OK, that's not what you said the other day. Well, I've known Mr. Hankers for many years, both at the City Council and Ackworth, where he had the utmost respect of the municipalities in Cobb, because 
Mr. Hankerson believed that we're one county. If you live in a city, you live in the county, we work together. And we became friends and cohorts there. And then when I was fortunate enough to come here, he and I have continued to be friends and I've learned a lot from him. And I appreciate all your dedication to serve this county and all its citizens. And it's truly an honor to call you a friend too, sir. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your friendship. Thank you. County manager. While Commissioner Weatherford may be the newest, I can attest that I am the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna share why. I'm gonna share why, it's not to rub anything in. But I, while I am the youngest, I do recognize that there is a work ethic that is associated with those who have been working and living on this earth a little bit longer than I have that is um, observable and well exemplified through David and much appreciated. And it's something that is also unparalleled. Um, there is a difference when a lot of people my age go into a profession that, you know, sometimes they don't expect for you to be there more than two years. And you've been with the county for how long? A little over 32 years as a county employee. Over 32. As manager, so. That's a very long time. It's something that, again, I think is reflective upon the age and era which our county manager has stepped into the county. But I think for him to stay here and the county to keep him here, and particularly for him to be in his role for as long, is a testament to him individually and his character and his contribution. Um, yeah. uh, I've been here for about four and a half years now, and I know that I cannot really um, attest to all that you've done. There are a lot of things that I haven't seen, but I can tell you from what I have seen, I am greatly appreciative of the relationship that we've developed. I appreciate you being a resource. I appreciate you being a confidant. And I appreciate you being an encourager. And I wish you the best of success in everything that you do and, and will continue to do in serving. Because I know um, a, a servant's heart is what you have and it's, and, it's, and it's what you will always be. And I know that um, whoever you touch beyond your life here at Cobb County will be as encouraged and as appreciative as I've been. So thank you, David. Really appreciate you. Let me have my department heads come up. I'm going to tell you, every department head, agency head, please come up and stand with me, please. Yeah. Let me say as they come forward, I, um, 1984, I had the opportunity or request to make a career changing decision. It was the toughest decision I ever had to make in my life. Uh, to leave a job that, that I love. Uh, most of you know that my background, I was involved with the creation of the Master Gardeners. I was on the Georgia um, Agriculture and Environmental Science Advisory Board for a number of years at UGA and love outdoors. But when I was recruited to come to Cobb, that was tough. But as I reflect back on all the great things that's happened in Cobb in our 32 plus years, in my 24 years as, as um, plus as, as, as um, county manager, it's the best career, career decision I've ever made in my life. The second hardest decision was making the decision to retire. Um, because it's a county that I love, I love serving the citizens of this county. I've always, in my entire career, had a great team that make me look good every day to, to enjoy serving the citizens, serving the community, getting involved with nonprofits, and giving back. That is my heart, as Commissioner Cuba talked about. I tell you, this community welcomed me in open arms in 1973, and I can't remember having one bad day uh, because it's all about giving, it's all about serving. And I want to thank the Board of Commissioners and every Board of Commissioner that I've worked for many um, that gave me the opportunity to serve our citizens of Cobb County in the state here this long. 
And I want to thank my department heads for making me look good every day. You've always had my back. I've always felt I worked for commissioners that had my back. I can't think of a better county that I would have rather worked for. I can tell you I'm not going to go to the pastor yet, but I will not manage another county. Uh, <laughs> uh, but not that I had any bad experiences. You know, I love Cobb, and, and I just don't want to take on that task because I probably cry every day and want to come back to Cobb every day. But, uh, but that's what it's about. That's our team effort. And I want to say every board of commission I ever worked for befriended me, respected me, dealt with me in tough times, even with critics. But, you know, that's part of it. Uh, I don't say anything negative about anybody. And it's, it's, it comes with age, I guess. But, uh, uh, but thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I said to the chair, uh, I didn't see this one coming. Uh, I said to the chair a few minutes ago, I thought I was supposed to be a part of, of agendas. And he said, you did. Uh, but because uh, he knows I don't like surprises. But that's, uh, but that, especially when it comes to me, because I do enjoy what I do. I have not had one day in my life that I regret getting up, coming to work. I, don't, I wake up every morning. I wake up every morning between 4 and 5 o'clock getting ready to come to work and because I enjoy coming to work. And I want to thank each and every one, the citizens of this county, the commissioners and staff, all of our staff, um, because I'm your biggest cheerleader. And again, thank you, Mr. Chairman and Board, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Um, we'll get a photo up here for everybody. We're going we're gonna to somehow make everybody get together here. And uh, Deanne? I bulldozed my way through the chairman. Thank you, Chairman Boyce. He said he would give me one minute because he knew I was going to take two. <laughs> this man here have made Cobb County the place it is today. David, we want to thank you for making it a better county. There has been times when I know the burden have been heavy, but you've carried it. One of the things that several years ago when you came to the Cobb NAACP, because the Martin Luther King celebration, which we had been having every year, was going to be defunct. David asked us, will you take it up? David. Judy and all of the staff in Cobb County have made the Martin Luther King celebration here in Cobb County one of the best, Amen. one of the best in the metro area. Not only did you help us do that, you have helped us do the job that we have did here in Cobb County. When we talk about equality and justice and everything, you've listened you have gave us 
the opportunity to be who we are here in Cobb County. Because to, to work with each and every one of the commissioners, you to us have been fair, your integrity, who you are, who you are. We love you, we respect you, and, and, and Cobb County's loss is you. We wish you well in whatever you're doing in your future endeavors. And just from the bottom of our hearts, we, our meeting is tonight so that our members are not here, but I came over here because I knew that Chairman Boyce would let me speak, so I'm here. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for being the county manager here in Cobb County. And as I started, you truly have made Cobb County a better place. And we're on a personal note. I am so pleased to have known and shared, shared some of the things that have made Cobb the place that we have today. Thank you. Let me say, uh, this is one of the organizations I've supported. And I did say to Ms. Barnum, let's partnership with uh, the, in, in the, I mean, the Martin Luther King Day celebration. But you know, everyone professionally or personally have to have someone in their life to keep them grounded. Um, and Deanne Bonner is one of those that keep me grounded. She give me accolades, she's my worst critic. Uh, and she make no apologies for it. But it made me a better person as well because you got to have someone they can be brutally honest with you at all times. And it was always for the better interest of this community. It was never, ever personally. And I want to thank you for that because we all need that in our life. Thank you. All right, no more surprises. Well, I thank everybody um, for, uh, for your patience and recognizing some incredible, incredible achievers in Cobb County. Uh, as you can tell, this is a great county, and tonight you saw a very small uh, spectrum of what that represents. And we're really, really proud, this board's really, really proud to, uh, to, be, uh, to be your elected officials. So with that, uh, we'll now go on to tab number six, right? And we have an update uh, on SunTrust. What we're going to do tonight is, because Mr. Hankerson was a county representative uh, with the Braves, the designated county representatives, uh, and then um, uh, Commissioner Rott worked the um, advisory committee, I'm going to have them do a, a joint presentation so we really see uh, why everything worked so well uh, on, the, on the opening homestand of the Braves. So with that, uh, Mr. Hankerson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This was uh, the home opener on Friday, April the 14th, and uh, uh, the management team of the Braves presented to commissioners and I with a jersey. But it was the goal line, and it was one where we had issued the CO, and that's what we had hoped to accomplish, and that's the significance of this, this slide that we had said, they had said, we'll be ready on April the 14th. And as Cobb County and this team, uh, as always, our staff, our fire marshal, our attorneys, our DOT, our IS, our transportation, the full team worked together because we knew this day was coming. And we uh, pulled it off as a team with Commission Art and the rest of the Board of Commissioners. And I want to just say thank you to them. Let's give them a big round of applause. So I, uh, and on April 14th, the team, the Braves team, Chairman Boris and Commissioner Art walked over to I-285 pedestrian bridge for the first time. It's one that um, was another milestone, and we wanted to make sure, I think the chairman wanted to make sure the bridge would be open and safe for pedestrians. 
I did join them in that group. I didn't make the uh, the walk across. Uh, it might have been a little tough with me, Mr. Chairman, but I did join you at the finish line. Uh, and uh, so here they are going back across the bridge on that particular day. We've got some fun facts here for you. Um, over 5.6 million hours, uh, man hours on the stadium. 57,312 cubic yards of concrete. Uh, 4,770 truckloads of concrete. 5,640 tons of rebar, which is approximately weight of 800 African elephants. I don't know who came up with that comparison, but uh, uh, I, I trust whoever gave me that fact uh, in the research. We had 6,800 tons of structured steel, which is probably the weight of 170 tractor trailers. Now, I can identify with that. 33,201.65 pounds of structured precast, which is probably the weight of 190 C-140 jets. I know where that came from. Uh, it wasn't you. I was going to blame you for it. That was so. from the Braves. Okay. But that's a lot. Okay. Two and 31,809 linear feet are nearly 44 miles of pipe. I can identify with that. 602,000 handset bricks, which would stretch 76 miles laid end to end. Uh, this, the first game, the sold out crowd early to see the opening ceremonies. Um, the... Uh, Unveiled the, brain, the Braves legend Hank Aaron got a massive welcome from attendees. And that was quite, a, quite an honor to see him get that as well. The team coming on the field for the first time, and that was quite another seven. The first of Friday night fireworks was enjoyed by all of us that participated in that as well. Friday night's fireworks there. Um, the home opener, just a quick update um, from public safety. 14 calls doing the home open, a suspicious person and or items, scalp or calls, a vehicle unlocked, two intoxicated persons, lock gates at parking garage, one complaint of parking blocking, and an apartment entrance. I tell you, with 41,000 participants, that is a low, low statistic there. Uh, Department of Transportation, uh, they had one summarized statement for me. Despite earlier fears, traffic and pedestrian flowed well. Average trip time for the park was over 30 minutes. Uh, and that was Armageddon what, did not happen. That, <laughs> not as it was predicted. Home open, the fire marshal. 1,800 inspections over more than two years. February 24, 2017, certificate of occupancy was issued. Ongoing, the fire marshal's office is present at every game and continue to work with SunTrust Park to make sure that the ticket holders and other visitors are safe and they're constantly evaluating and trying to find ways to improve. Mr. Hankerson, I, yes, I want to commend you. Just so everybody knows, not once, not once did the Braves ever call me and ask for a favor for any certificate or permit. And that's because they knew that Mr. Hankerson could take care of it. So I think that says a lot about our, our, our partnership. But more importantly, it says a lot about how Mr. Hankerson gets things done. So I want to commend you for that incredible achievement, Mr. Hankerson. One caveat to that, Mr. Chair, we had a great team. Uh, we had a team that was unbelievable. Um, that is part of what made my decision easier. We got a great team here, as you, you have constantly pointed out. Uh, seven game opening series fun facts. Um, 215,394 fans, an average of 30,771 per game. First two games drew sell out crowds of 41,449. Attendance increased by an average of 5,261 fans per game from last season, first seven games at Turner Field. 16 home runs were, home runs were hit in SunTrust, first seven games an average of 2.29 per game. Uh, my partner in working through some of the issues at the stadium, we, uh, Commissioner Ott stated that we worked a lot. I think we worked a lot over the last eight or 10 years. But I tell you, we spent more time, we talked sometime daily, three times daily, seven days a week, at night, whenever, to make sure that um, even the businesses and the stadium and everything else uh, so Commissioner Ott worked with me, through me, and I knew everything that was going on in the stadium. It's kind of rep 
Commissioner. And, and, and I can't emphasize enough, I mean, as um, the county manager said, it was a teamwork. Not just the two of us, I mean, the county staff, um, you have no idea, you saw a lot of numbers out there, and you saw how many inspections the fire marshal did. Um, regular building inspectors, health department, I mean, the number of inspections that took place just on the stadium to get it open, I mean, it really um, showed the teamwork. Um, and for those of you, when you go to a game, that 41,149, if the stadium is full and they have the guy up there moving the numbers around to see how many people are there, just remember that number, because that's, that's how you win the prize. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what was built here in Cobb County and, and how it all came together and worked. And can't emphasize the fact that the traffic has never materialized. This is, um, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> no, we know we had two full, full days. Okay, so this is um, the Sunday game that you saw um, when we opened the meeting tonight, the uh, unfurling of the flag. This is that game. Next slide. Um, just some more pictures of that. And if you look, you're looking out of the stadium and down into the battery. Next slide. Some more close-up views. That's Circle 75. It's just if you haven't been out there, gives you an idea of where everything's located. Nope, repeat. Another one, next slide. All right, this is looking down towards um, the Chop House Gate. This is where um, there'll be a wine bar on the left and just a little bit further down is the Yard House. Um, and you have um, some other shops coming over the next 30, 60, 90 days. The rest of the shops in the battery are gonna open. Another view of that. This is really important. So here you are in the middle of the Cumberland area and already we have people riding bicycles to the battery and to the game. I just, you know, when I saw that, and it was, and it was um, families with kids. Just to the right of the uh, parking deck you see there, there is actually a bicycle station that has um, lockers for your helmets, and it has like pumps and things like that if you need to um, make repairs on your bicycle. There's uh, the families. <coughs> Next slide. This is the flag. Um, you saw it unfurled in the video in the beginning of the meeting. Um, the flag weighs 1,100 pounds, and it's the size of a football field. It took 170 um, scouts and leaders to unfurl the flag that Sunday. That gives you an idea. You can see the little people at the end. <laughs> this is uh, the Mizuno experience. Um, there is an area to check out, to try out their uh, track shoes. There's also an area to try out their bats. And then there is an area, they actually um, sew mitts in this shop. And then if you take your, uh, your son, your daughter, your grandchild, to a game and you forget to bring a mitt, there is two stations um, outside the uh, foul poles that you can sign out a mitt and they can use it during the game. This is uh, another shot of the bridge. This is looking from the, uh, the battery. And this is just to give you an idea of um, <clears throat> how clean and well kept everything is. This is the walkway through the red parking deck from the bridge and then um, going into the battery. A nighttime shot of the battery. Remember, keep in mind that even when the Braves are not there, um, the battery is open 365 days a year. Um, there's music playing, there's restaurants. Um, it's a very comfortable, safe place to be at night. And since everything's been open, there's people there every day and every night. Um, I thought this was really unique. I just happened to come across it and we never really talked about it. There is a single seat over by the uh, first base foul pole that as you can see here with the plaque is, res is re in reserved in recognition of POWs. I think that's the last one. Thank you, Commissioner Nod. And that concludes our presentation. But Mr. Chairman, um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank all of my staff from the beginning with the contract to inspections, working through everything that we had to do to reach the April 14th date. And I just can't say the number of hours and when we look at the number of people involved throughout our organization, I just want to publicly thank the entire team. Um, yes, I may have been the leader of that team, but I can tell you the real work was done by the team members. And I just want to publicly say thank everybody that's involved in whatever fraction of, of, of making it to the April 14th date. And certainly want to thank the Board of Commissioners. So thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Angston, and better words were never spoken. Thank you very much.
And thank you also, Commissioner Ott. Uh, I believe we're going on to tab seven now, and we're conduct a uh, public hearing. Uh, Mr. Wilkes? I believe you're the first one up on the uh, on the podium. Good evening, Chairman, Commissioners, Mr. County Manager. Uh, the purpose of this item is to conduct a public hearing for the proposed closure and abandonment of a portion of Mitchell Road located in land lot 692 of the 16th District, 2nd Session, Cobb County. Mitchell Road, located in Commission District 2, is classified as a local street. The right-of-way for this portion of Mitchell Road, adjacent to the JEN Georgia property, is required to allow full utilization of the property purchased by JEN Georgia. Therefore, JEN Georgia and other abutting property owners have requested the county close and abandon this portion of the public right-of-way on Mitchell Road, as this section no longer serves a public <coughs> purpose. We request the Board of Commissioners conduct a public hearing for the proposed closure and abandonment of a portion of Mitchell Road, determine that said right-of-way serves no substantial public purpose, and authorize the disposition of the same by quick claim deed to the adjoining property owners, Jen Georgia 6, LLC, William E. Jett, Kathleen B. Keel, Michael D. and Margaret P. Kringle, and Charles R. Jr. and Marsha B. Neal. I want to remind everybody that at these public hearings, you have three minutes uh, to address to address the board. And uh, since we have a full schedule tonight, I'm going to really hold everybody to that three minutes. So with that, I declare this public hearing now open. Does anyone wish to address the podium to address this issue? Is there anyone that wishes to, uh, to come to the podium to address this issue? Seeing none, I close. I do now declare this public hearing closed. Oh, you have a comment. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. Please, come on up. No, that's fine. I, I, no problem. I didn't, I didn't quite get out close. We're okay. <laughs> okay. I'm deafened, so I hope my voice is okay. You're fine. All right. Well, I am in support of the adjacent property owners being able to receive this property. Um, I would recommend that something be offered to the county in return for this property. Um, if something is obviously not being put into use, perhaps the adjacent property owners could put it to their own personal use and possibly conservation. So I would recommend that in return for something being supplied to the county, such as monetary funds, that this unused property should be disposed indeed to the adjacent property owners. If somebody comes in outside of the adjacent properties to take this property, to buy it, um, they, could, they could put it to some other use that would not be appropriate for the county or for those property owners. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this, uh, this action is a result of a zoning that happened when it was in District 3. And this is through the hard work of Commissioner Burrell with working with the property owners and the developer. Um, and as a result of a rezoning that was approved by the county, the road basically um, serves no purpose because all those names that you heard are the people that were on that road, but they are all selling their property. And so that the road, um, it would just become a remnant that the county would have to deal with. And so what the county's getting out of it is the not having to spend the preventive maintenance down the road. Would anybody else like to approach the board, uh, approach the podium and address the board on this issue? Okay, now I officially call this public hearing to a close. And Commissioner Rott. Okay, I make a motion to approve the uh, abandonment of a portion of Mitchell Road located in land lot 692 of the 16th District, 2nd Section, Cobb County, Georgia, as depicted in the agenda. Second. Any discussion? Call the question. <clears throat> And it passes five to zero. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jim. Okay, we're going to tab number eight now. And for those of you who don't have an agenda, we're going to be conduct a public hearing on the uh, employment of consultant services for uh, for IS here and information services. So, Sharon, you got you have the podium. Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, um, Commissioners, County Manager. Good evening, I guess I should say. Um, information services request the board of commissioners conduct a public hearing prior um, for prior to employment of consultant services for the GIS big data project 
where contract fees will likely exceed $100,000. The GIS Big Data Project will allow integration and analysis of large volumes of data from the multiple sources such as waves and automatic vehicle locators with Cobb County's Enterprise Geographic Information System. The notice of the public hearing for this project was advertised in the Marriott Daily Journal on April 7th, 14th, and 21st. Okay, so do me a favor. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm a layman. Explain to me what you just said. Okay, so we have a we have a um, as as most of you are aware, and many of the citizens, we have a very um, a very robust geographic information system um, in the county, used by many of the businesses and all of the citizens. Big data is data which normally exceeds the general capacity of our servers, our processors, et cetera. Big, big data would be, for example, if we received all the data from Waves, as you're aware, we currently provide data to Waves um, for the Braves directions and for other areas in the county so that the citizens can use Waves and get information. This will allow us, the agreement also provided that data coming to us. We can't use it because it's such a huge volume of data. So this will allow our geographic information system to enter a new world of analytics, analyzing big data. Thank you. So uh, with that explanation, I now declare this uh, public hearing now open <coughs> on this proposal. Does anyone wish to address the board on this issue? Uh, again, does anyone wish to address the board on this issue of uh, GIS and big data? <laughs> Yeah, I see none. I now to close this, uh, declare this public hearing to a close. And thank you, sir, Commissioner Ott. I guess you have it again. Yes, one more time. Um, and I think one of the things point about this, and as the citizens will see, IS is working on um, creating a dashboard application that all this data is going to be available to you in a dashboard format. And so, part of the reason we really want to do this is it's to make the data available to the public. So, motion to approve um, the agenda as presented. Second. Any discussion? And I call a question. And it passes five to zero. Thank you, Sharon. I believe we'll now go to a tab number nine. And uh, uh, Dana Johnson, Community Development, is first up on the podium. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Dana Johnson, Cobb County Community Development, here to present three agenda items to you, uh, all of which require public hearings, sir. Agenda item number one is to conduct a public hearing uh, to, and possibly uh, consider the approval of a Chattahoochee Corridor Plan Certificate for a pool at a single family residence located at 711 Burning Tree Drive. Just as a bit of background, uh, this is required by 1973 law approved by the Georgia General, General Assembly called the Metropolitan Rivers Protection Act. This requires that all land disturbing activities within 2,000 feet of the Chattahoochee River shall be required to obtain this particular cert, uh, certificate prior to uh, the commencement of any construction activity. Um, the Atlanta Regional Commission does review all of these prior to uh, the approval by the local governing authority, and they have signed off and said this is in compliance with the particular act. This is a, a site map showing the location of 7-Eleven Burning Tree Drive, so you can see the general area and its proximity to the Chattahoochee River. And with that, sir, I would ask you to please open the public hearing in regard to the granting of the certificate. Then I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have and ask the board to please consider granting the certificate. Okay, uh, with that, I now declare this public hearing open on this issue to approve the Chattahoochee Corridor Plan Certificate. Does anyone wish to approach uh, the board to discuss this issue? Does anyone wish to approach the board to discuss this issue about the Chattahoochee Corridor Plan Certificate? Seeing none, I declare this public hearing to close. And I think this is Commissioner Rod again, right? It is. <laughs> um, we've seen a couple of these over the last couple of months. This one's a little bit different in that it's just for a pool. The house already exists. Um, so I make a motion to uh, approve the Chattahoochee Corridor Plan Certificate of Compliance for construction of a pool at a single family residence at 711 Burning Tree Drive. Do we hear a second? Second. Any discussion? And I call a question. And it passes five to zero. Uh, number two. Yes, sir. Item number two is to conduct uh, a third public hearing to solicit, to solicit comments and input on changes to Chapter 10, the animals section of Cobb County Code. 
Uh, the Board of Commissioners has uh, already conducted two, two public hearings on this particular code in February and March. At the March public hearing, the Board had requested some additional revisions uh, for this to come back for final consideration. This particular code uh, deals with regulations regarding the tethering of animals. And in this particular code, uh, as it is written currently, um, it basically only allows uh, the tethering of animals when it is in the uh, direct supervision of the animal's owner. Um, so that it's only a temporary condition when they are with, with the owner, is what this would, would authorize. And with that, sir, I would ask you to please consider uh, opening this public hearing uh, and then considering the changes to the particular ordinance, sir. Okay, so everyone who wants to talk about this is just sort of stand up so I get, a, I get a head count here. Okay, that's fine. I just want to get an idea of... That's fine. No, really, you're all going to get your chance to address the board. That's no problem. I just want to get an idea. Uh, so with that, uh, well, here's what I'll do. I'm going to declare this public hearing open. You all get three minutes, and what I'll do is um, just, you know, we'll just find a way to informally come up to one at a time. I don't want you all stand. Uh, we'll be here probably 30 to 45 minutes with the, with the uh, public hearing, and I don't want you to wear yourself out. Plus, more importantly, if you stand, people behind you can't see what's going on up here. So we'll just work our way from the front to the back, and I'll assure you that everybody will get their three minutes, okay? So whoever wants to come to the... Uh, the podium first. I declare this public hearing now open. Uh, please come to the podium. Uh, let me know what your name is and uh, where you live, and then please give your statement. Hey, uh, my name is Chris Benson. I live in West Cobb in the Due West area. Um, I, having reviewed the uh, the proposed language that is in the most recent version of the uh, draft amendment uh, package two of the revised draft code amendments, uh, I just want to urge the board to pass this code. I think it is a vast improvement over the uh, the ordinances that we have had for so many years now. And as a lifelong citizen of Cobb County, um, I'm just terribly pleased to see uh, that we're making progress, we're moving in the right direction. I think it's a, a big plus for our community and for the animals that we all love and have. And I will yield back the rest of my time. Thank you very much. I hope you vote for this. Thank you very much. Next. Again, I, I ask you to sit down uh, and I'll call you. Uh, just, it's just really hard for people in the back to see be, be in through you. No, no, not you, Liam Lady. <laughs> I'm sorry, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, please don't sit down. <laughs> okay, I just wasn't sure. I just no, no, there were people down. standing in the aisle. I just wanted to make sure they could all see you. Uh, okay, all right. Um, my name is Amy Barnes, and I'm a resident of Marietta. Um, and I am against the change in the law, as is stance. Now, my reasoning behind what I have to say as a position is that the language in the proposal is unconstitutionally fake. Okay, when you say attended to by an owner, does that mean that owner has to stand there in front of the dog? And the reason why I ask this is because the majority of people who do tether, and people that I know who do tether, um, do so because they're spraying for fleas inside the house. They are running this terrifying monster called a vacuum that the dog may attack. And so they can't necessarily stand out there with the dog or even assign somebody to stand out there with the dog while they're inside vacuuming, while they're inside with things like bleach that a dog may get into. So there are very valid safety reasons why somebody would want to tether. Um, so the language attended to by the owner I don't think is is constitutionally valid because it could be interpreted in two separate ways. You have attended to, meaning the owner's on site, but you also have attended to, meaning that the owner has to be there standing literally by the dog. Um, I, I think this goes in the way of strippage of supervision rights or lack thereof of the owner. Um, I, I think that making a person physically stand with the dog while it is tethered flies in the face of the very reason of tethering. Um, many people work at a home offices. They put their dog right out there for 15 minutes and they take the dog back. As far as the arguments in favor of a ban on tethering, 
is, is already addressed by this existing law. We already have laws that cover abuse of animals. We already have laws that say you have to provide food and water to a dog. We have laws that address, the existing code already addresses temperature requirements. And animal control officers who disregard complaints about temperature, such as a uh, neighbor's dog being outside in 20 degrees, ought to be re-educated because that is cruelty to put a short hair dog outside in 20 degrees. I think the tethering law needs to be amended. The proposal needs to be amended because people do have extremely valid reasons for tethering. And this would affect parents. This would affect primarily the poor, uh, primarily people who cannot afford to pay somebody to stand outside with their dog while they are cleaning while they are addressing um, uh, pest requirements, pest control requirements, in order to flea bomb a house, Thank you have to Barnes. tether the dog. That's your time. Thank you. Hello. Well, whew. hey, Chairman and Commissioners. Hey. So tonight's going to be a really good night for yes. Cobb County's animals and people who love the animals. I feel it. Um, but Mary, Mary never. I know who you are. I love you like a daughter. Mary Kirkendall, thank you. District 2. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Christian. All right, thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks. So um, anyway, nevertheless, it's going to be a great night, night to celebrate. Some things need to be addressed. Um, we appreciate that you have given us a no unsupervised tethering ordinance. We also appreciate that you took that from athens Clark County and I believe Douglas County. I presented Gwinnett County several times, and I just want you guys, once we get this passed, hopefully we can go back into and see how things are running and adopt a little more stringent or detailed um, codes that include the shelter requirements, because what would really address some of these, um, I think the unintended consequences that that I believe animal control is worried about, as well as you guys, is dogs that jump fences is why some people tie their dogs out. But um, we've got to start working with the groups, the coalitions that help build these fences, and that's what these right. pictures are showing. There's a group out of Durham, North Carolina called Coalition to Unchained Dogs. They build a fence, a uh, about three or four fences a week and unchain the dogs. Um, there's a new group that just started, and I want to give props to Jennifer Summers. She helped uh, form the, the Gwinnett County Tethering Law, and she has now started um, Unchain USA, Coalition to Unchain USA. She's um, you can find her on Facebook. They work only off donations, but they will be working with our area, North Georgia, Atlanta. So that's who we need to work with and support because people that can't afford to do anything with their dog, unfortunately, they shouldn't have a dog, agree. But the, the situations are going to arise, and if we can start supporting these groups that are building the the uh, pens, the outdoor pens, that will solve a lot of the issues. And um, But there's just a few other things that I think over time Speak fast. we'll Speak fast. work on. Thank you so much and for everything that y'all have done so she far. Gets three really, minutes. really appreciate it. And we just hope that we can all get together on the same page with the animals and um, make it a much better place, much better county. You know, Remember, thank you. this is still a first step. Uh, yes, and, and the other I good agree. news is, is that yeah. there's still no tethering even in, a, in an enclosed area. And that's fantastic. That's, that's this is good. there's that's no we, that's where we're there's going. no you know it's unsupervised tethering is forbidden. Thank so you it's a first so step. Much. Thank you, uh, thank you, thank you. And we're and we're looking forward to working with your groups. You know that. Thank you very much. <laughs> My name is Rebecca Anding. Howdy. I've lived in Cobb County for a long time, since 1976. And I love the county. I live here by choice. And I think that Cobb County is becoming the, 
the county that everyone's looking to now because of our Brave Stadium. Now we've got the soccer team here. And I think it's important that we continue to make Cobb County look like the good people that we really are. I've been doing animal rescue in the Atlanta area since 1996. And if you wanna ask who sees the ugliest of what happens when people chain their pets, ask people that work at animal control. They see some of the worst of the worst and truly, if you're going to have a pet, you shouldn't have a pet if you can't afford it. Mm. It's a luxury, it's not a necessity. It's the same with kids, people have them, they don't take care of them. And it's a shame that we have to legislate how people take care of their pets because you think when you're an adult that you should know, people don't know. And I have two pictures, I don't know if you can show them or if I can show them. This first picture is a, a Great Dane who was six months old and kept on a chain. And um, she was one of the first cruelty cases that they prosecuted in Clayton County. And she was emaciated like you can't imagine. Mm. This is what happens when we put dogs on chains because it doesn't, it's not a priority any longer. And cruelty is neglect, it's, it's all kinds of horrible things. And I'd like to see our county be better than all the other counties and, and set the standard because we can do this. It's not about policing our neighbors. It's about you see something, you say something. Mm. I've got one more picture. Sure. Sorry, I'm not real comfortable. This is another dog that I tried to intervene. It's a little 12 pound terrier that the people insisted on keeping on a chain. They had six dogs in their yard on chains. And no matter what, they didn't want to give the dog up because it's their dog. That was one of the two dead dogs on the property. She's still attached to her chain. She's not gonna run off. But this is what happens. People put their dog on the chain you know, if you're going to vacuum, put the dog in the bathroom, close the door, give him a Benadryl. Who runs your life, you or your dog? You've got to be the you've got to be the guardian of the dog. I mean, you really do. You have to be the guardian. So, I want to put a stop to this kind of stuff because thank we're you, better than this in come. Cobb County. All right. Well, thank we you. don't want this in Cobb County. I appreciate. We really it. don't. Thank you very much. Thanks. Hi, my name is Haley Bass. I live in Bindings, right by Sun Trust Park. Um, I volunteer with Atlanta Lab Rescue, and I'm a critical care registered nurse at Kennestone. Uh, Proverbs 31.8 tells us, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Ensure justice for those being crushed. And that is what we're here for tonight. It's my belief that God has entrusted us as human beings to care for his precious creations who in turn take care of us. We are the voice of those dogs who desperately need our help, who desperately need your help. And so when the easy thing to do is to turn your head and look the other way, please look at us, look into the eyes of these helpless animals and do the right thing because it is the right thing to do. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Joy Kramer. I live in Smyrna. And um, the comment earlier about uh, Mr. Hankerson and as one county I, I really appreciate that because I am part of one of the cities and it, it makes a difference that you guys all care about what happens to all of our residents in Cobb County. Um, tonight, I just wanna say thank you so much. This is a thousand percent improvement over what um, we talked about a few weeks ago. 
And I just want to quote a, just some quick points from the Humane, um, Humane Society of the United States, which is also here this evening. Um, Anti-tethering laws are good for law enforcement. They provide clear boundaries and set expectations for pet owners. Um, it's good for animals. Dogs are social beings but can become aggressive when tethered. Um, they're also exposed to extreme weather and potential strangulation. It's good for the community because dogs that are tethered um, can be excessive barkers and they are almost three times more likely to bark. So if they do happen to get off that tether, they're more likely to bark than other, other um, animals. And um, enforcement penalties actually provide a revenue stream to the county. So um, ex repetitive um, penalties are um, for repeater offenders can provide a new revenue stream. Um, lastly, I want to say with respect to the previous comments in regards to um, the vagueness of the law. Um, in traffic, a yellow light is deliberately vague, but, but there, is a, uh, there is a system for redress if you get a ticket for running that light, and it is up to the courts to decide whether you were truly cleaning the bathroom with bleach or if you were truly abusing your dog. So I appreciate you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, my name is Mary Gorley. I also live at Smyrna, just outside the city limits in the county. Uh, we've been in our house about 30 years. We've always had a dog. Our dog has never spent a night outside. He is, we put him on a cable during the day for, it's a 30 foot cable that gives him space to get around our yard, still keeps him well away from the streets. Um, he, we put him out there because he loves to be out there. He can get to the door to come back in anytime he wants to. Um, like I said, never out there when it's too hot. He likes the cold, so I can't say he's out there when it's not cold. <laughs> um, but also, I am worried about the, when you say you have to be with the dog. We, I, he is never outside when we're not there. We keep an eye on him. We make sure that we know where he is, make sure there's no other dogs running around loose that can cause trouble. And it would be punishment to our dog <coughs> if we couldn't let him be outside when he wants to be. Um, I don't think there should be a law saying we can't put him out there for a couple hours if that's where he wants to be and we're there to watch him. Even if I'm not outside, I'm still watching him. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Cynthia Ray, and I live in Smyrna also. And I have a dog, and I've had my dog for seven years. And my dog is very well taken care of, and my dog also is outside on a cable. And it's for recreation, recreational purposes. I walk my dog every day, and I take very good care of my dog. And I, too, agree that it would be a hindrance to my dog when she can't come outside for recreational purposes. She's not out there sleeping outside, she's not neglected or anything such as that, but it's just simply for rec recreation. She's not on a chain, she's not being abused or anything such as that, but she just loves to be outside. So I just think that it would be great if, you know, some kind of suggestion could be made as to where, okay, maybe you can leave me outside for a certain amount of time, which we do anyway. We don't leave, we don't leave our dog out to be overheated or freezing cold or anything such as that. She just loves to go outside for recreational purposes. And that's a convenience for her and I, so. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, you're welcome. Probably. Good evening, Cobb County Commissioners. Uh, members here in attendance. My name is John Galsinski, and uh, I reside in the 11th district, which is Marietta, and as you well know, politically. Um, 
I'm concerned with the proposed ordinance of part one, official code of Cobb County, Georgia, chapter 10, animals, article one in general. Section 10 through 11, proposed amendments, specifically control of animal, 10-11. In particular, A, general control, to C, which proposes, quote, it shall be unlawful for any owner of a dog to chain, tie, fasten, or otherwise tether a dog to a stationary object or pulley as a means of confinement, except that the dog may temporarily be confined by a tether while attended by its owner, notwithstanding subsections 2A, and 2B of this section. My objection begins with the fact that no harm is shown or claimed that somehow the proposed ordinance attempts to address. The burden is on the proposer in taking our freedoms, rights, and properties away from us. Today, I had called several of the dog uh, business places in Cobb County, that is in Ackworth, in Kennesaw, Marietta, and Smyrna. In all of the places that I had called, which are businesses, only one of them had a question regarding the nature of this change. The rest of them disagreed and thought that this would be, uh, an, it would be an interference to um, property rights of the people as well as their business. Um, the Republican Party certainly makes it a hallmark of the Republican Party to sustain businesses. And as such, I urge panel members who are fellow Republicans in that regard. Um, I had prepared several other things. However, given the fact that I'd been cut to three minutes from what my understanding was of five minutes to speak, what I would like to do is submit uh, by way of either paper or an email or something to that effect regarding the, um, it's, it's more uh, formal by way of content relating to this, if the Board of Commissioners Thank you, would sir. consider this. Time. Hello, Tim Smith, uh, Ackworth. Uh, my wife and I run a, uh, a nonprofit that helps local rescues here in the community. And I just, the only thing I want to say first off is thank you for the revisions that you're considering and to address the concerns that's being uh, spoken here in opposition. I think people need to, to put things in perspective that if this does pass, this isn't going to be a policed state where, you know, people are driving around and looking in your yard and staring at you and going to turn you in. These are for extreme circumstances giving us teeth when we call to report somebody who is obviously neglecting and abusing their dog. The people who are concerned about their dog being on a tether while they are cleaning or doing something out in their yard or washing their car who is going to call animal control on you? Keep it in perspective. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Linda Hunt, and I'm a Cobb County resident living off Barnes Mill Road. Since I've come before you with complaints previously, I want to thank all of you tonight, especially Commissioner Weatherford and Cupid for taking the time to get this tethering ordinance right, for the animals especially. I've spoken with Captain Owens, and it will be difficult to enforce this law, nearly impossible, he says. That's why I ask all the commissioners to consider including information on animal control in your town hall meetings and the board of directors meetings monthly. 
Animal control alone cannot enforce this ordinance. It's up to the citizens of Cobb County to speak up when they see an animal left outside on a tether or in the yard without proper shelter, food, or water. Ask them to call, ask them to make a call to animal control, give them the phone number to call, and when animal control is open, ask them to consider speaking with their neighbor and seeing if they can do anything. I know this is utopian thinking, but in order to make things right for the animals, the citizens must speak up. The call to animal control can be an anonymous. These are living, breathing beings, not slabs of concrete or miles of plantings. Please don't let this be the last time the Board of Commissioners think or speak about the plight of animals living in less than adequate conditions in Cobb County. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Deborah Berger, and I'm your state representative with the Humane Society of the United States. I'm not a Cobb County resident, but I've had, um, I want to thank y'all so much for considering this and for being a model um, for the state of Georgia. M many of the other metropolitan, um, many of the other metro counties do have tethering ordinances, and y'all are addressing this correctly by making it um, without the exception of time because that is impossible for your team to enforce. But there are some really good points made here tonight, which are number one, this is not meant to be punitive. Right. Number two, this is a tool in the toolbox to have better concern, to have better care for the animals in your community and public safety. I haven't heard much conversation about public safety, but if you look at the statistics of most of the serious dog bites that injure our children and our um, citizens, Many times, I believe the statistic is two out of three, those were animals that were chained and not socialized. So there's a lot more here. Even if the animals are not your top priority, this is good for the community. Um, and most of all, what I'd like to say is that going back to that young, the nice man who, hoo-ha, what does that stand for? Help us help <laughs> animals. That was great. This is not meant to um, punish people. This is... Um, First of all, I imagine you're going to offer a transition time and that your right. animal control officers will have an educational period right. where they'll give, they're not going to walk up to people and punish them. They're going to say, did you right. know there's a new law? And also, um, there are many grants right now available and many new groups cropping up that are helping people who can't afford a fence. So it, those people, sh if you have an animal and you can't afford to put up a fence, there will be many resources and that could be part of the... Um, educational and I just want to let y'all know a lot of people here know how to get in touch with me or I'll send y'all an email we're happy to be a resource and help you make this transition and commend you for being such a progressive county in so many ways and this is another step in your progress so thank you very very much thank you and uh, do me a favor would you let uh, our animal control and our public safety know those uh, organizations with the grants? I will, and, and we've had very good um, okay. interactions with Great. your animal Terrific. control. They've even hosted a um, yeah. law enforcement yeah. training here. Okay. You've had very, you have sure. a very good animal control. All right, thank you. Here. Good evening. I did not come plan to uh, prepare to speak tonight. I wasn't planning on it, but then I'm. Well, you're here listening. now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so bear with me. And I was listening to some of the um, just, reasons. Have you, you have your name and roughly oh, where sorry, you live? I'm sorry, Bruce Banks. I live in Cobb County okay. since, ever since I moved to Atlanta in 82. Uh, I've had dogs for every year, 56 years of my life. Only time I've ever needed to tether a dog was when we went on a picnic and didn't want the dog running off right. around the park. These reasons for tethering a dog are just rationalizations generally, I think. Um, I have a neighbor that doesn't have a fence. He keeps a dog in his house, comes home at night and lets him out. I let him out during the day. Um, it's, yeah, I think, I think it would be nice to see Cobb County lead the way in this. And uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it's not about constitutional rights or property rights or freedom. That's nonsense. You're not, you don't have a freedom or a right to abuse an animal, and it's abuse. Yeah. And if the law is not definitive 
and the, the old law as it stands now is vague. If it's not more definitive and clear, it, it, it opens the door to abuse. And it, it really, at the end of the day, it's just about compassion for another living thing. <laughs> That's it. And uh, I hope you folks will do the right thing here on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. I'm sure you know me by now, but my name is Andrea Miller. I'm just the one that started Cobb County Animal Alliance and actually brought this to the attention of Captain Owens and you all. Um, apparently, this issue is incredibly important and was overdue for the attention brought to update this law. Please remember what we are wanting to change, which is mistreatment of canines, and that includes tethering. Thank you for your change and know that these changes are for the betterment of us all and of course our wonderful Cobb County. We brought this to the attention of the commissioners because legal cruelty was being executed daily. Having to live day in and out next to seeing emaciated and neglected tethered canines totally pushed me over the edge and brought me to fight for these uh, voiceless creatures. We aren't here to target those who genuinely do love their canines and care for them and treat them well. These ordinance changes are to bring justice to those canines who are living in a daily hell. As I said before, with the strong support and attendance and clout in the individuals who have spoken, this is something that has been needing change for a while now, and we really appreciate it. Thank you. I just have something quick to say. My name is Lindsay Moss Frangi, and I just, live in Ackworth. Just let us know. What's your name? Lindsay Moss Frangi, oh, okay, and I live in you. Ackworth. Sure. And um, bad things happen to tethered dogs. Um, I don't know if you've heard the case of um, some teenagers who thought it would be fun to cut the ears off a dog that was tethered. They were unsupervised. The dog bled profusely and died in the backyard. Um, they get wrapped up in the tether. They have their feet amputated because they got wrapped up in the chains. So there are bigger things and bigger issues to deal with, safety issues with children. If these dogs are chained and not socialized and they break off that chain, they are going to attack a child. That's why you have to pass this. It's important. Thank you. Do you want to make a comment, Dana? <laughs> okay, all right. I'm just make, I just want to make sure that does anybody else wish to approach the podium with this issue? Okay, I, declose, I now declare this public hearing closed. And I believe we're now going to bring this to a vote. Is that correct? Yeah. You are able to, sir, yes. Okay. So um, I'd, like, um, I'd like to make a motion. Uh, to revise the ordinance regarding the tethered animals as uh, as revised and stated in the uh, in the agenda tonight. We have a second, and now I, I know we're going to have some discussion here, so I'll just sort of go down the table here, Commissioner Ott. I think everything's been said. Okay, Commissioner Burrow. Um, I would just like to say that um, I appreciate all the input and public comments on this over the past couple months when we've been addressing this. I think Ms. Hunt and um, the gentleman with the hoo-ha shirt in the back, <laughs> and I'm sorry I, d I didn't get your name. Um, I think y'all made it very clear that you're going to have to be our eyes and ears in the community. We don't have the resources um, through animal control or public safety to patrol and and find homes that are tethering, unsupervised. So we are going to rely on you to be our eyes and ears and call animal control and report it. And I can assure you it will be investigated 
and um, addressed when you call, just like a code enforcement complaint or anything else. But thank, thanks for your persistence. Commissioner Weatherford. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks for everyone that spoke today. It's uh, been a work in progress, and I think we've come to a good solution. Uh, the takeaways I had from the public speaking is this is not meant to be punitive, but be for those rare cases, hopefully rare cases, where abuse occurs, not for those that are washing their car or doing whatever they want in tether uh, for short periods of time that are under control, and they love their animals. So I would urge all of you, as Commissioner Burrell said, to look for those, but specifically look for those that are being abused and not for those that do care for their animals and they're taking care of them uh, and doing it in a humane and correct way. So, thank you. Mr. Cupid. Just want to thank those who've come to our commission meetings to apprise us of um, your concerns with respect to tethering. Um, I have been fortunate to help sponsor this, and I am myself, I don't. <laughs> I don't have an animal, I don't have a dog, um, so this is not because I have any um, personal um, attachment to this matter, but what I am attached to is ensuring that our citizens have a voice when they do have a concern. And so it was important for us to at least provide a platform to hear what those concerns were. And I must share that you have been convincing in letting us know that we could play a better role with respect to um, animal control here in Cobb County. So I appreciate everything that you've done to educate all of us, to educate me with respect to this matter. I do know that we do have some loose ends with respect to providing education. I think that was shared by one of our speakers today to make sure that they are, that our public is aware that we have a new ordinance and we've had some discussions about that internally and I'm gonna ask for our community development director to address this. And also with that education for there to be a grace period for people to come into compliance as again, this is not meant to be punitive, but to help us better reach our goals with respect to how we um, um, address animals within our county. So thank you, and um, again, it's, it's great to see the level of support for this ordinance. Okay, I'd like Andrea and Mary to come to the podium. I want Andrea and Mary to come to the podium. <laughs> Back in January, these were the only two people that spoke to this issue. And I want you to tell you, and I've been saying this for months now, this board listens. These two ladies came to this hearing and started what's going to be, what you're going to get tonight. And I'll be quite, I'll be quite honest with you, I, I have a dog. He's the first dog of Cobb County, all right? <laughs> But I thought that what they said made sense. Thank you. It was that simple. They were, they were, they were articulate. And for once, Mary was brief. All right? Uh, but she made sense. As you know, they got a point. So I asked uh, uh, Dana and uh, Community Development to look in revising the ordinance. And let me show you what's come out of this. First of all, if you had ever told me that Commissioner Weatherford and Commissioner Cupid were co-sponsor a bill... I would have jumped off the Empire State Building. <laughs> but Maybe these two commissioners right here took this uh, amendment and they ran with it. And I'll tell you what else happened. Normally we have a, a public hearing, we hear it one month, and then we come back the next month and we vote on it. That didn't happen this time. Because the first time around, not only did Andrew and Mary bring, you know, make their point like, no, what you have isn't good enough, they brought other people and they created the public weight that we need to hear in an interest. And tonight, we're a product of that community investment in democracy. Okay. It does pay to stand up and say something. It does. And I'll tell you right now, what pushed me to decide that, that we need to vote this was the issues that you brought up one night about tethered dogs being subject to uh, coyotes. All right, and we have a coyote issue problem in Cobb County as we do in the metro area. Mm -hmm. So we're already tying these dogs literally with their feet behind their back 
because they don't have, it's not a fair fight anymore. So that was a part to me that convinced me. But also, Mary and I have had some very, let's put it as we say in, in, the, in the editorial parlance, frank discussions over time. But that's what it takes if you believe in what you're standing for. Our job is to listen to you and do the best we can to create an ordinance that we can find enforceable, which is what the board's been saying tonight is, as much as we'd like to go a little bit farther, we have to write an ordinance that, our, that does not burden our public safety with something that is unenforceable. And what we can do tonight is enforceable with a partnership with the county. Right. So uh, my hat's off to you two ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay? you. We appreciate you. Thank, you. Thank you very much for all you've done. And with that, I'm going to call the question. And it passes five to zero. We will. Let me um, can you see the, Let me see. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Right here, right here, right here, these guys right here. Okay. How long is the next section gonna take? Depends on the number of um, speakers. Okay, do we have any speakers for the next uh, public hearing on fire prevention codes? All right, so let's do that one since I don't see any, and then we're gonna go into a recess for, for a short, short period, all right? Okay. We'll do that. <laughs> all right. All right, Dana, the last, uh, the last, the uh, Item number three hearing. under the public hearings for community development, sir, is the first public hearing to solicit input on proposed amendments to Chapter 54, Fire Prevention and Protection Code, Chapter 62, the Health and Sanitation Code, and Chapter 122, which is the Utilities Code. Um, getting right into the ordinance changes. Okay. Uh, section 54-3 and 54-50 are being altered. 54-50 is being struck. 54-3 is assimilating the language of most of 54-50, but this is changing to cover the article, is, is being changed to cover the entire chapter rather than just the article as it relates to penalties for so fire safety compliance failures. The next section is 54-51. This is to clarify construction types regarding the requirements for approval of plans by the Cobb County Fire Marshal's Office. Again, it's 54-51. The next section is 54-96. This just removes dupli duplicate requirements that existed in the fire sprinkler activation verbiage, sir. 54-100. Deals with the definition of a fire action plan. This particular section adds a component to requirements where new fire alarm systems would need to be equipped with uh, a means to verify the cause of the alarm to help understanding what caused that, that activation to begin with. Section 54-101 deals with the fire alarm certification requirements, and this is really an, an opportunity to provide an alternative method of compliance for our contractors to help in, in, in meeting the safety codes. 54-102 is to amend the requirements to inspect or silence fire alarms. This language is to clarify the intent that, the, that um, as it relates to the process uh, for inspections and the silencing of those particular items. 54104, uh, this one deals with uh, matching the current business practices within the fire marshal's office with the current chapter requirements. We did hear from a couple board members about some concerns with some of the language on this, uh, and the fire marshal's office will be getting uh, with the county attorney's office in order to provide some alternatives to some of the language that we heard some concerns with in our previous work session on this item, Mr. Chairman. 62-33 deals with the health and sanitation. Uh, these are the rules for the Board of Health, and basically what they're doing here is they're taking out the date specifics and they're putting in as, um, as amended from time to time so that as the state updates their particular rules, uh, those would be simultaneously updated here with the county since the Board of Health is a state agency, sir. 
And last, but never not least, sir, is chapter 122-152 in the utilities section. Uh, this deals with the water systems and master meters, and basically some language is being removed that has been determined to be unnecessary as it relates to the managing of master meters. With that, sir, uh, there will be an additional public hearing on May 23rd in this room at 7 o'clock p.m., uh, and after that meeting, the board um, may take action on any of the codes that are presented by staff uh, in, the, in this particular code package. Okay, with that, um, and I'll declare this public meeting open. We have a hearing tonight, right? Yes, sir. All right. Please do. So anyone who would like to approach the podium on this issue? Does anyone would like to approach the podium on this issue? If not, I declare this public hearing to a close. And uh, thank you very much, Dana. And we will adjourn until 920. A recess, recess until 9.20. And if anyone would take their seats, please, I'm uh, going to call this meeting back into, uh, back to order. And we're going to go to tab number nine, right? No, we're not. We're going to go to tab number 10. And tonight, we have a number of public speakers, right, Ms. Dance? Yes, you have 12. All right. Minus one. Minus one, okay. Okay, the first speaker is David Birkenbein, if you come forward. So what we're going to do again is, if you're a speaker, just, just keep your seat, and we'll call you forward, and that way you can relax, you know, and, and not block the view of the speaker, so... You can come forward, David. You're always welcome. You know I didn't know you heard me. You heard me. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Board of Commissioners, County Commissioner. Uh, David Burke and Biden, Medical Burn Band. I know y'all are listening to me. You've heard me. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm still beating the bushes and trying to get at all these people that are in a thousand, you know, have their thousand foot radius on a medical burn band. But just a food for thought when uh, we were talking about grandfather and stuff in. Let's go back to 2006 when a medical burn ban started. Let's go back to 2007 when it got amended. Let's go back to 2016 after I started speaking, it got amended again. We're doing all these amendments just for this one thing, outdoor burn pits and all this stuff. I mean, we keep amending it, seems like every year. But if we're gonna grandfather it in, let's grandfather in a medical burn ban back to 2006 when uh, Fire Marshal or, or Fire Chief Dillinger put it into play as a good purpose. Uh, like I say, there's 42 still in the county uh, and I'm getting to most of them. I was supposed to have two speakers tonight with me, but one day I'll get the people behind me and hopefully y'all will stand up and listen. We had an incident this weekend where my neighbor that has a medical burn ban, the person was burning, it was the 15th. Uh, and they have stories of calling 911 and she had one to where they told her not to call 911 and I wish she would be here to call the non-emergency 911. Well, there's nowhere in the fire marshal deal that says call the alternate number, it says call 911. So the 911 people ought to learn what they're supposed to do as far as I'm concerned. But I called 911 and I gave her all this information. How'd you get that information? I said, well, it's a long story. I'm fighting for the medical burn ban in Cobb County. And you go to your GPS on your deal and you see all these little red circles. I said, every little red circle is a thousand foot. And in that thousand foot, there's an address. So I've been sitting down, printing out maps, taking my protractor, and finding that, that finding that address within that thousand foot because it's going to be the center of it. Uh, is it your burn ban? No, it isn't. They're burning in a medical burn ban. So as a public citizen, I should be able to call this in if I know there's a medical burn ban in my area without being drilled and grilled, which I didn't take offense to. Uh, gave her my name, gave her my number. Gave her my address if the fire department wanted to speak. And not only that, it, it was the uh, weekend of the, I believe the 15th and the wind was gusting to 20, 25 miles an hour. 
and you can't burn them over 10 miles an hour. You can call John, uh, McCollum Airport, they get to reading there, they get to reading from Charlie Brown Airport, and even, you know, you could see the wind blowing because it would blow, blow, you know, just blow it on around, and it, and it was on an unsafe condition too. But uh, I appreciate y'all's patience. Uh, we'll slowly get there. And Mapleton's looking good. We got a dumpster out there on that <laughs> on that one building out there. You're welcome. I say, <laughs> and she said, the man was out of country. I said, out of the country for two years. I'd like to do that. I said, that's what I need to do. And they're taking care of Powell Drive. The people, the, the, the police are going down there and putting those stickers on the windshields uh, that are in the right of way. And uh, we're looking at maybe getting the property owners that are renting these squatters of these uh, import export businesses uh, get involved on who they're renting to and how they're taking care of their conditions down there. And one more thing, uh, Bankhead, Bankhead Highway is the first highway that runs from Washington, D.C. all the way to San Francisco. And we changed Bankhead Highway going through Mapleton because of Bankhead Courts, because of drugs. Well, we don't have Bankhead Courts anymore. Why can't we either have a little yellow sign that, that they have, Bankhead Highway, and uh, have it as part of our, you know, our history. I mean, we're connected. We're, we're connected to the East Coast or the West Coast. Okay. Uh, is Destiny still back there? you're on television here um what is what is is um is it a legitimate 911 call to call about a a, 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 a burn ban it typically would be would i would have to look into his particular situation no i'm not just saying i'm just i just for my information and for the people in the audience so if somebody calls 911 uh and says they have they you know they they think there's a burn ban and it's not being uh being enforced that'd be a legitimate call <laughs> Yes, sir. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure about that because I'm sure, look, it's not a perfect world, David. Uh, I know we do the best we can. We probably get 999,000 calls right, and every now and then something gets misinterpreted. So uh, I'm sure Destin will take care of this. No problem. We just transfer, you know, information yeah, right. back and forth. So. I just want to make sure. I, I know we're doing the right thing, but I also like to make sure that, you know, we work for you. Uh, all of us do here, and I just want to make sure that if you have any questions, Destin will be happy to answer them for you. Well, okay? I appreciate everything y'all do. Okay. Thanks, David. Thank you. Thanks, Destiny. The next speaker is Tamara Feliciano. Good evening, commissioners. I want to first apologize for picking today to do this, but um, I am an attorney. I live in Fulton County, but I practice in Cobb County, and I represent many of your residents, and I'm proud to represent those residents. Um, and most of those residents... I need to have your name. I'm sorry, Tamara Feliciano. There you go. No problem, because we, we, we're going to write you a letter saying thank you for coming. <laughs> um, I represent countless consumers in Cobb County and throughout the state of Georgia who have been defrauded by Petland and its franchisees, including... Petland Kennesaw here in Cobb County. And those consumers always come to me with the same question, and that's how. How is this allowed to happen in my community? Why wouldn't my government protect me from, them, from this, is what they're asking me. And what I quickly realized is I could sue all the pet stores in the world um, and get relief from some of these consumers, but I'm never going to be able to protect those future consumers. And so that became my call to action. And last November, attorney Boris Melter, my co-counsel, and Karen Paul and myself met with Dana Johnson and we proposed a pet shop ordinance um, prohibiting the sale of dogs and cats. 
We met with Dana Johnson and he told us that we, he would run it by Captain Owens and the county attorney and get back to me and he did. Um, and I have to mention that Dana Johnson and Captain Owens are wonderful um, representatives of the community. I think they, they were very, um, they listened very well. Um, but Captain Owens contacted me in January and he said that because Commissioner Boyce had uh, just taken office, they wanted to push this uh, to a public hearing later um, in the year. And he told me to check back in March. Um, but in between that conversation and March, HB 144 dropped. And as you know, that was a house bill that was uh, supposed to address the retail sale of dogs and cats and regulate it. Um, and Mr. or Captain Owens contacted me and said that they would be pushing that hit back, hearing that issue until after HB 144 uh, was decided one way or another. And so one session ended, I reached back out um, to Mr. Johnson. He told me something that kind of surprised me a little bit. He told me that the um, county felt it was a state issue or the county was being advised that it was a state issue. Um, and that we would need two commissioners to sponsor the ordinance. So what I'm here for today is to implore two commissioners at least to sponsor this ordinance. And um, as, as I mentioned, HB 144 um, was supposed to be a consumer puppy protection law. And its sponsor, Earl Earhart, said something very important, I think it kind of resonated with me. And he kept saying that, you know, this is something the state had been discussing for many, many years and many, many sessions, and it's never passed through. Um, and this session was no different. So what that tells me is that the state is deferring to the local government to make this decision and to, and to hear its constituents. And the problem that's happening is if the state is deferring to the local government and the local government is deferring to the state, in the middle is your consumer protection and your animal protection that's getting lost. And so I really am imploring you to take a look at this issue and sponsor this ordinance. Um, and I believe that the government closest to the people governs best. And I think Cobb County can best govern this issue because you can hear from all of your constituents about how this issue affects them. Some of them are here today to tell you exactly that. And, and I think that you know, the issue becomes about, you know, Petland Kennesaw is your main, is your main pet store here. And I'm, I know that the commission, I'm sure, has seen news media articles about Petland Kennesaw. And what I can tell you is they're all true. I brought with me a binder today, and I hope that you will look through this binder and see that the evidence shows predatory lending, inhumane sourcing, USDA violations endlessly. <laughs> meaningless warranties, and I could tell you that they're meaningless as an attorney, um, shell corporations. If a consumer wants to sue Petland Kennesaw, good luck. It took me two years to figure out who, who their operating uh, corporation is, and I guarantee you that a consumer is not going to find out that information very quickly. And they've been the subject of multiple investigations. So I, I heard you talk earlier about this is something that the community is interested in. This is something that's worth discussion. Um, I do not, uh, there have been several false claims about what pet shops ordinances do. They do not put, con they do not put businesses out of business. There's a local pet shop owner here today to tell you that. Um, they require humane sourcing. Um, it says the, the, the false claim has been made that pet shop ordinances will prevent consumers from buying a breed of their choice. But Thank you, you guys have That's your time. Hey, let me uh, say a couple things before you go anywhere. First of all, you're looking at the five people that set policy for this county. If we didn't sign that letter, then it didn't policy. All right? I'm sorry, what letter? We said that it was the policy that we didn't get engaged with the state Oh, issue. that was just an email. Okay, all right. Well, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Unless you got the email from one of us, it, that's not policy. All right? Mm -hmm. So there's only five people in this county who set policy, and you're looking at them. Secondly... Uh, the way things happen in this county, uh, and, and I'm just saying that, it's just really simple. Uh, we, call, we call it walking the halls, where four of us uh, are located along one hallway, and then uh, I'm isolated on the other end of the hallway. What I would, what I would recommend is that you call uh, and work with the board members, all right, get an appointment with them. Just start with any one of them, all right? And uh, their executive assistants will set up an appointment with, with them. They're happy to do that. We're very open. As you know, we listen to the public, and we're very, we're very, we're willing to probably listen. Uh, not probably, we're willing to listen to your, to your case. And then, if you can find the two commissioners, 
Uh, there's no problem making an agenda item. And I made it very clear to everybody here that I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be the second uh, board member all the time. Because in the old days, they had to have two people besides the chairman. No, uh, if, if one other commissioner here wants to make an agenda item, I'm always going to be the second vote. It's that simple in the Cobb County. So what I recommend you to do is uh, make an appointment just alphabetically, one way or the other, and uh, bring your case to one of them, all right, and see if you can find a board member that will wor work with you. And if that's the case, then I'll be your second, and we'll put it on, make an agenda item. I'm not promising you an outcome uh, of any kind, but I will commit you to for is that we will make an agenda item where it will be brought before the people and the board, and uh, you'll hear the case. Does that, does that work for you? Yes, I was just... I Yes, I was just needed clarification because the we had originally reached out to a commissioner um, and then we were sent to Dana Johnson. So I just wasn't sure how to re-engage. Sure, no. And I certainly didn't want to take up your office hours if it's something. That no, 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 you're not taking up our hours. We work for you. <laughs> we're not. We're not. We're not on. The, we're not. We're not being paid by the hour. Okay. Sure. <laughs> um, and and they're grateful for that. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that we were well aware of the uh, of the HB bill, all right, mm -hmm. and that was that was the right approach. Let's, there's no sense getting out in front of the state, absolutely, if they're going to address that. But they're, they're in agree. a recess now, and uh, we we meet through the whole year. So just like I said, uh, just make an appointment with one of the com of the commissioners until you find your one. When you find your one, you've got your two. Uh, if you want to find more than two, that means you got three. That's a pretty good chance you might get right. something to happen, all right. <laughs> Thank you. So, and just, I just do want you, you to recommend know that. I leave this or? No, you can sure absolutely. Just leave it okay. with the county clerk here, and she'll I've get got it to five us. Five copies of the ordinance. Absolutely, no problem. Fact sheets. No, we're happy to do it. Copy that I absolutely. Thank you. All right, you're certainly welcome. The next speaker is Karen Paul. If you'd come forward. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Karen Paul. I um, live off Bell's Ferry. Uh, I've actually emailed all of you multiple times trying to actually arrange meetings with you guys to speak further upon this issue. Um, I'm here tonight to hopefully encourage uh, correspondence between us in order to find those sponsors. Um, how do you put three years of work into a few minutes is, you know, very hard to do. But there's a specific need uh, for this here in our community because of public concern and consumer protection. For over two years now, I have been working to help consumers and pets in Georgia after what I personally experienced in a very prolific pet store within this county. I worked in the pet industry for over 10 years, so I was already aware of the reputation of this particular store. But when I made a personal visit to the store, I was astonished at what I saw. Finally, I realized two years ago, something had to be done after I witnessed a Great Dane on the sales floor under incredible distress due to medical conditions that had not been addressed or attended to. In fact, I was so concerned, I approached every single employee within that store, and they either ignored me or tried to sell me the dog because the dog was on the sales floor available to the public. I visited that store for the next Petland Kennesaw for the next three days to see if he would ever get the medical attention he so needed, and in fact, he never did till after he was purchased by an unsuspecting consumer who later confirmed what I had feared was happening. Multiple visits afterwards showed animals with injuries or illness offered for sale to unsuspecting consumers. I then started a Facebook page to start to raise awareness about the actions and activities of the store while reaching consumers who I knew needed help in hopes of creating legislative legislation for change. I began to personally investigate the store and what I uncovered was truly alarming and sometimes personally horrifying. Animals were being sold that were sick to consumers, sometimes so sick they ended up dying shortly after purchase. Animals would be on the sales floor that would appear to need in middle of medical attention, what would be offered to, for sale to the public. 
Employees and staff were misleading and deceiving the public and consumers on a variety of issues and allegedly participating in consumer fraud. It became apparent that the owners of Petland were allegedly illegally treating consumers and store pets within their own homes under no supervision of a veterinarian. Petland was supporting some of the most inhumane breeding facilities in the nation, but continued to tell the consumers and public that they only supported the best of the best. But paperwork and documents told a horrifyingly different story. And as this personal investigation progressed and I became more involved with somehow holding this pet store accountable, I began to witness more and more disturbing trends of animals disappearing, pets dying, employees lying, and Petland doing anything and everything to stop what I was exposing and to prohibit the truth from coming out. I will never forget a small puppy named Giant. He died horribly. To go into detail of what happened would take too long to explain the depths of travesty that happened right before a major holiday. He died a horrible death because Petland lied. He was diagnosed with parvo shortly after a consumer purchased him. The preferred vet of Petland Kennesaw at the time, Dr. Waller, went to such lengths to hide how this pet died that when the owner and I went to retrieve the body of Giant, he had removed all the organs from the body so that a proper necropsy could be deterred. They continued to deny that Giant died from parvo after two other highly recognized veterinarians proved he had died from this contagious illness. This is just one of many heartbreaking experiences due to the actions and activities of this location. This community needs you to support this so that this doesn't continue to happen. There are counties and cities across the country who have also passed similar successful ordinances because of these issues. These are serious things that are happening here in our community. Serious allegations of consumer fraud by hundreds of local consumers here in Cobb County. Serious allegations of what employees and owners are doing to these consumers. Last year, this particular location hired in store an attorney, a pet store. They will bully, threaten anyone who tries to speak out about what is going on internally Thank within you, the store. Thank you, ma'am. That's your time. Thank you. Wait one second. I don't go anywhere. I'm just you keep saying Kennesaw. I want to make sure it's it's in the county thing here. It is in Cobb County, and okay. you guys do have the re, you, you can take action by doing an ordinance. This is so serious. Um, you know, I've been doing this for three years trying okay. to is, expose this. Is uh, Captain Owens here? How about public safety? There you go. All right, come on. Uh, hey, Skipper, come on up here for a second, would you? Um, I'm sure you know about this case, the Petland store. Petland Kennesaw? Yes, sir. Okay, so why, why don't you give me a rundown as to where we are on this? We are not doing anything with Petland. And that's because the, there's no violation of an ordinance? Or the state's been looking into the store and business. The state has been. The state of Georgia. Right. The state of Georgia. right. Yeah, why don't you come up here to the front here? I'm just, just, just so we all understand where we are here. I didn't hear the whole question, sir, so... Well, you obviously know about the Petland issue, okay? Yes, so, sir. So, um, is, and you're telling me this is a state issue because it's, it's a state-regulated industry? Right. The state is regulating those uh, the animals there at the facility. They okay. come in and have an investigator come in and check. Okay. The county has not done anything to regulate that business at all. So it's not violating any county ordinance, right? No, now. sir. Okay. But not currently unless we change it. So the issue right now is between the state and this business? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, Tamara, can you come back up here for a second, please? Yeah. All right. So, um, I just want to make this very brief here because we're, you know, we're obviously uh, we have some other speakers. You've got obviously gone to the state. I've gone to the state multiple times. Okay. Um, the state issued a quarantine, a temporary quarantine, one time. Okay. The state ordered or didn't order, but 
told Petland Kennesaw to stop treating, uh, told the owners of Petland Kennesaw to stop providing consumers with in-home vet care. Okay. Those are the only two actions. Otherwise, the state has disputed the findings of UGA. Um, in the particular case Karen Paul was talking about, that was a case of parvovirus. The state disputed the findings of parvovirus despite the fact that the necropsy was performed okay. by UGA. All right. Well, then that goes back to what I'm saying. Since we don't have an ordinance right now, mm -hmm. if you're trying to trying to generate one, you're going to have to do what I call to walk the halls. All Correct. right. So because we're very, you know, we, we stay out of other people's legal lanes for a lot of reasons. Sure. And I know Deborah Dance is giving me the look right now to make sure I don't say any more. Exactly. Uh, but but you see where we are right now. Yes. We can't enforce something if we don't have an ordinance. And if it's uh, if, if higher authority supersedes our authority, which is the case of the state, we got to be very, very careful here. Ab absolutely. That's why we're just asking that okay. you consider the ordinance. Right. Because but I, but I appreciate both your comments and statements. Thank you. Uh, sure, go ahead. Yes. Petland, is it a franchise business? It is. It's a, pet it's a franchisee of Petland. Your Cobb County Petland actually is one of the, uh, is like kind of the nucleus of the corporation. Um, and we're seeing the same issues widespread throughout the franchise. Okay. And I am preparing a class action lawsuit, so. Okay. Um, with you, okay, so you're asking us to take action for Kennesaw, which would impact all Petland organizations? No, 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 Just no, the no, one in of Kennesaw? Of course, yeah. It would just prohibit the sale of dogs and cats in Cobb County so um, at it, pet shops, it but would, not. It, okay. So the Petland would still operate in jurisdictions outside of Cobb and be able to sell and operate under similar, there's a similar structure. Correct. Or, or, in fact, or, the owners of Petland Kennesaw own a, a store in Sarasota, Petland franchise in Sarasota, and Sarasota just passed the same ordinance. Okay. So. All right. Well, that we're gonna yes. stay. We're gonna stay out of this legal uh, yep. issue right now. But we get your point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cat Mullins. The next speaker is Deborah Berger. Me again. Um, just, okay, I want to just talk to a different aspect of what they're bringing up. And, and yes, they will walk the halls, and I'll be more than happy to come with them. Um, as Humane Society of the United States, we do a lot of investigations. And to add to the files, I want to let you know that pet, we did an investigation of pet stores in Georgia. And, of course, Petland, Kennesaw, we have found some um, infractions there for sure. But I wanted to talk about something that I think is probably very important to y'all as commissioners, which is business. Um, I want to emphasize that over 200, I believe it right now the counts at about 220 cities have passed this bill. And the reason, passed this ordinance, and the reason why you're entitled to pass this ordinance is Cobb County is paying for animal control. You guys are paying for the overpopulation of animals in your county, and it's very expensive. So you should have the right to regulate how many animals are sold in your county. This will not affect people buying from independent breeders. This will only be a ban on, this would only be a ban on the retail sales of pets from com, that are commercially bred. It is not anti-business. And here's a couple interesting facts, and I want to, I'm going to add this to the file too. The pet industry is one of the fastest growing business b, industries. It is an enormous business. 24 of the ton, tw top 25 businesses do not sell puppies. They sell pet supplies. They sell all kinds of things, and they are making millions and millions of dollars. Um, this is not an anti-business move to consider this ordinance, and I'm going to leave this, 24 of the 25. And through this process, I've learned something very interesting. There are 77 pet, pet lands in this country. 12 of them don't sell pets. 12 of them exist. So Petland would not even have to go out of business if this happened. They just have to change their business model. So we're not asking, when we talk about this ordinance, it's not an anti-business. It's, um, it's, it's changing to a more progressive model. And you guys showed tonight that this is a progressive county. So I think y'all can do this. And again, we are available. I'm available. Tamara's available. Karen's available to answer any specific questions. And we will come see you. But I just wanted to emphasize that point that we're not trying to, that these ordinances are not anti-business ordinances. And thank you again for all your consideration. Y'all are really wonderful. The next speaker is Regina Ryan. Hello. 
This is my first rodeo with something like this, so bear with me. Um, my name is Regina Ryan, and uh, I am the owner of a pet store here in Kennesaw. Um, it's a pet supply and nutrition business, and I've been in business for over seven years. Um, the truth is that there were quite a few years that I was in business that I had been hearing and seeing things with my own eyes um, about this situation, and I opted to stay quiet. Um, I felt like because of the location of this store it, to mine, um, because the truth is we do have a very similar business without the selling of the pets. Uh, I thought professionally it was probably the best thing to do is just not say anything. Um, eventually, I could not do that anymore. I had to say something, and my question was, what can I do to help? Um, so, having said that, um, I am here in the capacity to be witness to the countless dogs and their humans. And I'm, I'm sorry, I know this is not an emotional, it's not supposed to be an emotional conversation here, but when you see this over and over, um, they, they, these people come through my front door begging for help for their pets. Overwhelmingly, they, have, they all have one thing in common. These dogs have all been purchased from the pet land in Kennesaw. I'm not here to advocate putting someone out of business at all. I am here only to advocate removing the unethical part of that business. Yes, there are many levels to this debate. It's no secret where most of these animals and these puppies come from before landing at Petland. And that is a debate in itself. But when I am one independent store seeing a pattern of sick dogs and broken-hearted people for over seven years coming from the same situation, this is a problem, and it's a real problem. The words, we will replace the puppy if anything happens, might be their way to guarantee a sale, but these puppies are not cars. They are breathing, living entities that people hope to include as part of their family. When these puppies die prematurely, or the family is burdened financially with chronically ill pet that they love, how does someone warrant a, rep a replacement policy or option? They don't, they don't want these puppies replaced. They want the puppy they fell in love with to be healthy and live its deserved life. My business does not sell animals. It does not need to. There are many options, responsible options, available to businesses like mine, which can facilitate increased revenues. We have the responsibility to show our humanity and compassion for the animals that have such great purpose. We are their voice. It would be a great injustice to turn a blind eye on this irresponsible and unethical actions of a few, namely this pet land here in Kennesaw. We all have a responsibility to be part of the problem and not part of the solution. Or I'm sorry, part of the pro solution and not part of the problem. Um, so I'm asking for your support here. Thank you. The next speaker is Amy Barnes. Okay, um, my name is Amy Barnes. I'm from Marietta, Georgia. Y'all know me already. Um, something very interesting happened today. I had to flush my water for 27 minutes. Um, for a second there, I thought I had Flint's water. Um, I called in to find out they were flushing the fire hydrants. And I also found out that I was not notified of this happening prior to when I needed a shower. <laughs> So if there's any way that we could be notified that our water is going to be impacted by something like flushing, that would be awesome. Um, the other thing is when, um, when we, we see ordinances that are passed, okay, and I can understand tonight's ordinance after talking to plenty of people, it would be nice to see it in writing that this is not intended to be punitive. It would be very nice to see in writing an offer made to all the citizens of Cobb to please make a neighbor aware of the fencing charities or the fencing nonprofits. That's something I would absolutely donate to. So if we could see this olive branch being offered throughout the county, 
that would make me feel so much better. And, and that would truly be a service of the people. Uh, for example, I see newsletters coming out into the email, and thank God for that. I appreciate the communications from the commissioners. Uh, this is an essential method of communications. It would be really neat to see a newsletter insert about how fences can be had, about alternatives to chaining and tethering. Um, because if there was an olive branch, I fully support that. Um, I, I do thank this county for being very communicative. I, I love the electronic newsletters that I get, and I subscribe to several of you guys. So um, again, I thank you for your efforts. And um, some additional communication from the water department would be very much appreciated. I like my showers clean. Hey, Steve, are you there? So is it uh, uh, hey, Amy? Do you live in Marietta or in Cobb County? That would be Marietta in unincorporated Cobb. So you live in unincorporated Cobb yeah, County? Yeah, yeah, it's Cobb County water department. You don't live in Marietta City? No, 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 okay. no. I'm like one street away from okay. that. Okay, and so I'm just curious. That's a good question. Just, I'm sure we, we, we get it right most of the time. Uh, but when we flush the system, does it have an impact on, on houses? Yeah, come on up. Yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's a good question. Huh? Yeah, the fire hydrants get flushed both by the fire department and by us. Oh, okay. Uh, in our case, most of the time we do flushing. It's after a uh, a replacement project or sure. something like that. Right. In which case we have signs up. Okay. The fire department, I believe, tends to be more of a open the fire hydrants one at a time as they go through a neighborhood. Sure. Okay. It could have been either one of us. Okay. Um, we, we try to give notice when we when we can, and, and I don't know what happened in this particular okay. situation. All right. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks, Amy. Please, please bring it up. Okay. Next speaker. Okay, that concludes the first six. Okay. There are six yeah, more. Yeah, keep coming. Do Absolutely. Yeah, consolidate? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next speaker is Tracy Deaver. Hi, my name is Tracy Dever. I live in your county in Ackworth, Kennesaw Ackworth line. And I am here tonight to, for this talk, to implore you to please sponsor this ordinance. I was an unsuspecting pet land customer, and this dog had to be put down after her second birthday. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just don't want this, what I went through to, for other people, unsuspectingly, to go through this pain and agony. And it is not about recovering any of the money or any of that. It's about the fact that I purchased this dog unsuspectingly, thinking that this dog was going to live out its life with me and everything that we had to go through afterwards. And my lawyer, Tamara, is here tonight. And she has been helping me at no fee. And we are trying to, we are putting together a class action lawsuit against them. And I just really, it's a, for me, it's about justice and shutting down the part of their business that is unethical. Um, it, I, I just, that's all I wanted to say. And just to please ask you, to sponsor this ordinance or to please move forward with an ordinance that would help people, unsuspecting people like myself, fall victim to this kind of horrible, horrible cruelty to the animals and to the customers. Thank you. The next speaker is Judith Fry or Free. It's Judith, and the last name is spelled F-R-I-E-H. Okay. The next speaker is Frank Savini. Um, I just want to acknowledge that Frank um, agreed to uh, turn in his sheets, which we have. So I want to acknowledge your sheets. 
I am Frank Savini. I'm the president of the Cobb County Civic Coalition, and I'll be very brief. I did turn in some sheets to Bob. I understand the, the board will be addressing OSC. In our last meeting, we actually uh, uh, adopted a proposal, so all we wanted to do is to share our thoughts on OSC as you delve through and make improvements to it. So for the sake of time, I will hand out these other sheets and thank you for your time and thank you for all you do. I can assure you, Frank, we're, this OSC issue has gone right to the top. Uh, we're working the process right now of getting an agenda item. Uh, all OSCs that have been applied for are still active, uh, but we need to have, take a hard look at that. I know Dana is, is looking at the ordinances for the summer. <coughs> So uh, we're, we're taking some action in that regard real soon. Thank, Thank you. you. The next speaker is Norm Fagg. Good evening, Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Norm Fagg. I live in Cobb County, and I represent the Cobb Parks Coalition. Uh, and I'm here to, first and foremost, uh, thank all of you for the issuance of the partial parks bond uh, and to ask you, is it yet for sale? Is what for sale? The parks bond. Yes, it is. It's been issued. Yes, it's been issued, right, uh, Bill? We don't sell it. The parks bond's been issued, right? Yes, sir. Yes, it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was just curious. Um, I want to say that also that we look forward to the remainder uh, being funded in some way as the, referen as the referendum mandated $40 million worth of land for parks, uh, thus fully restoring the county's honor in this matter. Uh, and we are also asking that the board provide an update on the progress of the parks bond at the meetings. And that's all I have to say. Yeah, we're, we're, we're in the process of, we've, we've approached the owners mm -hmm. um, and we've given them our offers and now they have a time period to consider the offer and come back to us. So, uh, you know, we'd like to let everybody have an appropriate period of time to, uh, to consider our offers. Mm -hmm. uh, the bottom line is though, is, is that once, once we have an appraisal, we can't go above that appraisal. So there's some there's some negotiation, but there is a limit to the negotiation. And of course, as we have a number of properties, it's going to take a little bit. But we're we're actively uh, working with the owners of the property, trying to come to an agreement on the uh, on our selections. And of course, those that accept our offers, those that don't accept our offers, means that we're going to have to go back down our list some more, and continue to find properties till we fund the full. Uh, initial allotment, uh, which is about $27 million. Have you all had a chance to put on your thinking caps and try and figure a way to fund the additional $14 million? Well, I've made it very clear, Norm, that, that I can't handle it next year because uh, I made a commitment not to raise taxes except to, to fund this initial bond, okay? Um, and then in 2019, uh, I'll work forward to honoring my commitment for the remainder of the $40 million because it's going to have to come from either the general fund or somewhere. Uh, but we made, the, uh, we made it very clear, uh, although some don't agree with us, that we can only fund about $27 million out of that $40 million right now. So I'm still committed to finding $13 million for the remainder of the bond somewhere during my four years in office. Okay. Thanks. I'm, I'm on record as saying that. You, you got me on video. You got me in Word. All right. I got to work okay. for the board. But yeah, I hear you. I, <laughs> I haven't forgotten you. Well, we, we do appreciate the, the $27 million being being funded. That's uh, great progress over, as opposed to the nothing that happened in the sure. previous eight years. Well, as soon as the, as the property owners you know, agree to our negotiations, you know, then we can, we'll release that information as to who's agreed to our proposed offer. But right now, the property owners and the commissioner are still working with them. But we're, I can assure you, we're actively working on those properties that we've nominated for the first $27 million. Great news. All right, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. The next speaker is Mary Gorley. Mary Gorley. The final speaker is Cynthia Ray. Cynthia Ray. I believe both of those individuals may have already spoken. Let's 
go to uh, tab number 11. And that was, let's see here. This consent agenda. Okay. What's up? What can I say? All right, so uh, I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve the uh, consent agenda as revised and authorize execution of necessary documents by the appropriate county personnel. I got a second. Any discussion? Um, yes. Yep. And we have a comment from Commissioner Rott. Yes, um, I will be voting for the consent agenda, but we'll be voting against, or I would like the record to show that I'm voting no on, on number eight. Show that uh, on the consent agenda, Commissioner Rott will be voting no on number eight. Any other comments from the, uh, from the from the board? With that, I'll call the question, and it passes five to zero. All right, let's go to tab number twelve. And Mr. Wilgus, I believe you're back. I am. Good evening, again, Chairman, Commissioners, Mr. County Manager. We've got a long agenda tonight. Our first agenda item is to approve a construction agreement with the Georgia Department of Transportation for thoroughfare improvements on Cobb Parkway at Cedar Crest Road, Autry Church Road. Cobb Parkway, US, uh, Cobb Parkway at Cedar Crest Autry Church Road is an approved thoroughfare improvement project in the 2011 SPLOS Transportation Improvement Program. The department is in receipt of a construction agreement from GDOT for the Cobb Parkway at Cedar Crest Road, Autry Church Road project. Under the terms of the agreement, the state will fund eligible construction costs up to a maximum amount of $372,780.66. The county will be responsible for funding 100% of any construction costs exceeding the state's maximum. We request the Board of Commissioners approve a construction agreement with the Georgia Department of Transportation for thoroughfare improvements on Cobb Parkway at Cedar Crest Road, Audrey Church Road, and authorize the payment of a construction administration fee in an amount not to exceed $5,000. Mr. Weatherford. Motion to approve as presented, well needed. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? Call the question. And it passes 5 to 0. Thank you, sir. Our second agenda item is to approve a contract with Baldwin Paving Company, Inc. for thoroughfare improvements on Cobb Parkway at, Aud at Cedar Crest Road, Audrey Church Road. Cobb Parkway at Cedar Crest, Audrey Church Road is an approved thoroughfare improvement project in the 2011 SPLOS Transportation Improvement Program. The low bid of $372,780.66 from Baldwin Paving Company was reviewed and found to be reasonable and responsive. The scheduled completion date for the project is 270 consecutive calendar days from the issuance of the notice to proceed. We request the Board of Commissioners approve a contract with Baldwin Paving Company in an amount not to exceed $372,780.66 for thoroughfare improvements on Cobb Parkway at Cedar Crest Road, Audrey Church Road. Uh, Commissioner Weatherford. Motion approved as presented. Second. Any discussion? Call the question. Passes five to zero. Thank you, sir. Our third agenda item is to approve project number X2214 to the 2016 countywide unit price contract with Excel Air Construction for drainage system improvements on Cahaley Drive. Drainage system improvements is an approved component in the 2016 SPLOS Transportation Improvement Program. The low bid of $92,800 from Excel Air Construction was reviewed and found to be reasonable and responsive. The completion date for this project is 30 consecutive calendar days from issuance of notice to proceed. We request the Board of Commissioners approve project number X2214 to the 2016 countywide unit price contract with Excel Air Construction in an amount not to exceed $92,800 for drainage system improvements on Cahaley Drive. Mr. Burrell. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Call the question. And it passes five to zero. Thank you, sir. Our fourth agenda item is to approve project number X2225 to the 2016 countywide unit price contract with WE Contracting Company, Inc. for drainage system improvements on Glen Place at Lucinda Place. Drainage system improvements is an approved component in the 2016 SPLOS Transportation Improvement Program. The low bid of $135,672 from WE Contracting Inc. was reviewed and found to be reasonable and responsive. Bid tabulation consisted of $105,672 in roadway costs and $30,000 in water system costs. The completion date for this project is 45 consecutive calendar days from the issuance of notice to proceed. We request the Board of Commissioners approve project number X2225 to the 2016 countywide unit price contract with WE Contracting Company, Inc. in an amount not to exceed $135,672 for drainage system improvements on Glen Place at Lucinda Place. Uh, Commissioner Cupid. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Okay, the call the question. 
And it passes five to zero. Thank you, sir. Agenda item number five is to approve a supplemental agreement, uh, supplemental agreement number one to the resurfacing contract 2017-1 countywide major thoroughfares uh, local uh, maintenance improvement grant with Baldwin Paving Company for the resurfacing of two county maintained fire station parking lots. Resurfacing is an approved component in the 2016 SPLOS Transportation Improvement Program. The department is in a receipt at receipt of a request from the Fire and Emergency Services to resurfacing the parking lots for Fire Station Number 6 and Fire Station Number 24. This includes required pavement markings, installation of an 8-foot concrete dumpster pad at each location. Fire and Emergency Services agreed to fund this request. We request the Board of Commissioners approve Supplemental Agreement Number 1 to the resurfacing contract 2017-1 Countywide Major Thoroughfares Local Maintenance Improvement Grant with Baldwin Paving Company, Inc. in an amount not to exceed $54,839.65 for the resurfacing of two county-maintained fire station parking lots. Uh, Commissioner Weatherford. Motion to approve is presented. Second. Any discussion? Call a question. Passes 5-0. to zero. Thank you, sir. Our sixth item is to adopt a resolution of authorizing the submission of a FY17 local maintenance and improvement grant program application to the Georgia Department of Transportation for safety action projects. The department has received a safety action projects request from the Georgia Department of Transportation to provide a list of potential projects eligible for funding assistance available through the FY17 local maintenance and improvement grant program. We request the Board of Commissioners adopt resolution authorizing the submission of a FY17 local maintenance and improvement grant program application to the Georgia Department of Transportation in an amount not to exceed $440,805 for safety action projects. Commissioner Weatherford. Motion approved, sir, is presented. Second. Uh, any discussion? Call the question. Passes 5-0. to zero. Thank you, sir. Our seventh item is to approve project number X2517 TO uh, hashtag 01 to the 2016 Master Task Order with Kimley Horn and Associates for traffic engineering study along Holly Springs Road. Planning studies is an approved project in the traffic management, traffic signal timing, and planning component of the 2016 SPLOS Transportation Improvement Program. We request the Board of Commissioners approve project number X. 2517-TO number 01 to the 2016 Master Task Order contract with Kimley Horn and Associates, Inc. in an amount not to exceed $19,440 for traffic engineering study along Holly Springs Road. Commissioner Burrell. Um, motion to approve. Second. And uh, discussion. Sure. Um, we did have a public information update. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So we're what we're doing is taking another look and expanding the project to um, the Post Oak Trit and Holly Springs intersection. With so this study, we are yes, ma'am. This this will be a new study and additional um, project. So I, I just want to make those comments because a lot of people that attended are wondering what happened. <laughs> To their comments. So we're revisiting this with, um, I guess, an expansion of the project component. That's all. Okay. Any further discussion? Call a question. Passes 5 to 0. Thank you, sir. Our eighth item is to <clears throat> approve project number E7580 TO number 101 to the 2016 Master Task Order contract with Reynolds, Smith and Hills, Inc. for engineering design of Gordon Combs Road sidewalk. Sidewalks is an approved component in the 2011 SPLOS Transportation Improvement, Improvement Program. We request the Board of Commissioners approve project number E7580 TO number 01 to the 2016 Master Task Order contract with Reynolds, Smith and Hills, Inc. in an amount not to exceed $95,430 for engineering design of Gordon Combs Road sidewalk. Commissioner Weatherford. Uh, motion to approve, sir. Second. Any discussion? Call the question. Passes 5 to 0. Thank you, sir. Our ninth item is to approve preliminary engineering agreement with CSX Transportation, Inc. for preliminary engineering at Old, highway, uh, Old 41 Highway Bridge over CSX Railroad. 
old Highway 41 bridge, old 41 Highway bridge over CSX Railroad. It's an approved bridge replacement project in the 2016 SPLOS Transportation Improvement Program. This is a joint project with the City of Marietta. The project will require review and approval of final engineering design plans and other related construction documents by CSX Transportation, Inc. The cost for the preliminary engineering review services will be in an amount not to exceed $17,600. We request the Board of Commissioners approve a preliminary engineering agreement with CSX Transportation, Inc. in an amount not to exceed $17,600 for preliminary engineering of Old 41 Highway Bridge over CSX Railroad. Commissioner Burrell. Yes, motion to approve. Any discussion? Call the question. Passes 5-0. to zero. Thank you, sir. Our tenth item is to approve a preliminary engineering agreement with CSX Transportation, Inc. for preliminary engineering of Paces Ferry Road sidewalk at CSX. Sidewalks is an approved component in the 2016 SPLOS Transportation Improvement Program. This project will, review, will require review approval of final engineering design plans and other related construction documents by CSX Transportation, Inc. The cost for the preliminary engineering <coughs> review services will be in an amount not to exceed $25,300. We request the Board of Commissioners approve a preliminary engineering agreement with CSX Transportation, Inc. in an amount not to exceed $25,300 for preliminary engineering of Paces Ferry Road sidewalk at CSX. Commissioner Ott. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Call the question. Passes 5-0. to zero. Thank you, sir. Our 11th item is to approve a utility relocation agreement with Georgia Power Company for preliminary engineering and relocation of facilities on Little Willio Road over Timber Ridge Branch. Little Willio Road over Timber Ridge Branch, previously identified as Willio Creek, is an approved bridge replacement project in the 2016 SPLOS Transportation Improvement Program. Construction of this project will require Georgia Power Company to remove and relocate their existing facilities. Since the facilities may be located on Georgia Power Company's easement, and the cost for the relocation and amount not to exceed $41,410 may be reimbursable by Cobb County. We request the Board of Commissioners approve a utility relocation agreement with Georgia Power Company in an amount not to exceed $41,410 for preliminary engineering and relocation of facilities on Little Willie L Road over Timber Ridge Branch. Commissioner Ott. Commissioner approved. Second. Any discussion? Call the question. Passes 5-0. to zero. Thank you, sir. The next several items involve grant submissions. The item number 12 is to adopt a resolution authorizing the submission of a transportation improvement program grant application to the Atlanta Regional Commission for construction of Mableton Parkway pedestrian improvements. The department requests authorization to submit a grant to the ARC in an amount not to exceed $4 million for Mableton Parkway pedestrian improvements. We request the Board of Commissioners adopt a resolution authorizing the submission of a transportation improvement program uh, grant application to the Atlanta Regional Commission for construction of Mableton Parkway improvement programs from Factory Shoals Road to the Chattahoochee River. Mr. Cupid. So moved. Second. Discussion? Call the question. Passes 5 to 0. Thank you, sir. Agenda item number 13 is to adopt a resolution authorizing the submission of a transportation improvement program grant application to the Atlanta Regional Commission for engineering design of Mableton Parkway pedestrian improvements. The department requests authorizations to submit a grant application to the ARC in an amount not to exceed $500,000 for Mableton Parkway pedestrian improvements. We request the Board of Commissioners adopt a resolution authorizing the submission of a transportation improvement program grant application to the Atlanta Regional Commission for engineering design of Mapleton Parkway pedestrian improvements from Veterans Memorial Highway to Factory Shoals Road. Uh, Commissioner Cupid. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Call the question. Um, pass. Pass. Sorry. Do you want to, you want to comment? Yeah, I have sure. a clarifying question. Sure. Yes, ma'am. Um, the scope of this project, and, you know, I'm remiss in not being careful with this because I've seen this so many times, but the scope of this project is to be um, Mableton Parkway between Veterans Memorial and Factory Shoals or to Lee Industrial? This one is to Factory Shoals. So what would be the sidewalk between Factory Shoals and Lee Industrial? What would be the 
between that and the Chattahoochee River yeah. is a 10-foot sidewalk on one, a 5-foot sidewalk on the other. So the grant would just cover to factory shows, and then the county would cover the additional? The, all right, the difference between the two grants, the one between factory shows and the Chattahoochee River, that the grant that we're requesting there is for construction. The grant that we're requesting from Veterans Memorial Factory Shoals is for the design. Okay. Thank you. Okay, good. Yep. Okay, I'll call the question. We already did. Already oh. Oh. I, I we're think we're no, good. we're gonna we're gonna we're good. We're good. I, I thought that was a discussion period. Well we had already voted Well, let's unvote it. I'm just kidding. We're not gonna okay. unvote it. No, we're not gonna vote it. <laughs> oh, I'm getting the look from Commissioner Q, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> Next. All right. Thank you, sir. Dig me out of this hole. Agenda item number 14 is to adopt a resolution authorizing the submission of a transportation improvement grant application to the Atlanta Regional Commissioner for preliminary engineering design of Cobb Parkway at Barrett Parkway grade separation. The purpose of this project is to reduce the vehicular de tra uh, travel delay along Cobb Parkway and Barrett Parkway in the project's vicinity. This location has by been identified as the number one non-interstate bottleneck in the town center area. The department requests authorization to submit a grant application to the ARC in an amount not to exceed $500,000 for Cobb Parkway and Barrett Parkway grade separations. We request the Board of Commissioners adopt a resolution authorizing the submission of a transportation improvement program grant application to the Atlanta Regional Commission for preliminary engineering design of Cobb Parkway at Barrett Parkway grade separation. Uh, Commissioner Burrell. Yes, motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Call the question. Pass the five to zero. Thank you, sir. Agenda item number 15 is to adopt a resolution authorizing the submission of a transportation improvement program grant application to the Atlanta Regional Commission for a preliminary engineering design of Cobb Parkway at Windy Hill Road grade separation. The purpose of this project is to reduce the vehicular tra uh, travel delay along Cobb Parkway and Windy Hill Road in the project's vicinity. This location has been identified as the number one non-interstate bottleneck in the Cumberland area. The department requests authorization to submit a grant application to the ARC in an amount not to exceed $500,000 for Cobb Parkway at Windy Hill Road grade separation. We request the Board of Commissioners adopt a resolution authorizing the submission of a transportation improvement program grant application to the Atlanta Regional Commission for preliminary engineering design of Cobb Parkway at Windy Hill Road grade separation. Commissioner Ott. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Call the question. Passes 5-0. to zero. Thank you, sir. Item number 16 is to adopt a resolution authorizing the submission of Transportation Improvement Program grant application to the Atlanta Regional Commission for construction of South Barrett Reliever Phase 3. The project of, of the purpose of this project, along with Phase 1 and Phase 2, is to provide mobility and congestion relief along Barrett Parkway. The project will provide an alter, alternative route to the public traveling the highly developed office and commercial areas of I-75, as well as those motors accessing I-75 at Barrett Parkway. The development requests authorization to submit a grant application to the Atlanta Regional Commission in an amount not to exceed $13,054,549 for South Barrett Reliever Phase 3. We request the Board of Commissioners adopt a resolution authorizing the submission of a Transportation Improvement Program grant application to the Atlanta Regional Commission for construction of South Barrett Reliever Phase 3. Commissioner Burrell. Yes. Uh, motion to approve, and this is another partnership with the Town Center CID. Yes, ma'am, it is. Um, has been on hold for a while. One is complete. Barrett Reliever 2 is under construction, and this will be the third phase. Yes, ma'am. I have a second in discussion. Call the question. Passes 5 to 0. Thank you, sir. Item number 17 is to adopt a resolution authorizing the submission of a Transportation Improvement Program grant application to the Atlanta Regional Commission for proposed Cobb Link Saturday service modifications and addition of Sunday service. Cobbling currently provides local bus service on Saturday, but does not provide Sunday service. service. In recent passenger uh, satisfaction surveys, Cobbling passengers, passengers have consistently requested Sunday service to better meet their transportation needs. 
The department requests the authorization to submit a grant application to the ARC in an amount not to exceed $6,800,000 for operating costs associated with proposed cobbling Saturday service modifications and addition of Sunday service over a four-year period. We request the Board of Commissioners adopt a resolution authorizing the submission of a Transportation Improvement Program grant application to the Atlanta Regional Commission for proposed Cobbling Saturday service modifications and addition of Sunday service. Commissioner Cupid. Yes, Chairman. Um, this item has been a long time coming, and I'm pleased to support this item as well as many members of our community, including our employers who I've um, had some communication with, and they're happy that um, their employees will have um, an opportunity to be able to use transit to get to work on Sunday. So with that, I um, move to support this item. Second. And with a comment that this is to request funding for the $6 million project. 6.8, yeah. I'm sorry. This is to request funding. Yes. This is to request $6.8 million in funding over four years mm -hmm. right. for the operation of Saturday for and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday service. Thank you. Any, any further discussion? And just to be clear, it's our part of that would be about 350 annually, correct? If, if That's we, correct. If sir. we get the grant. That's thousand. correct. 340000 Right. That's pretty close. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? If not, call a question. And it passes five to zero. Thank you, sir. Our final item is item number 18. <laughs> it is to adopt a resolution authorizing the submission of a transportation improvement program grant application to the Atlanta Regional Commissioner uh, Commission for West Atlanta Street Trail. West Atlanta Street Trail is a proposed project in the sidewalks component of the 2016 SPLOS Transportation Improvement Program. The department requests authorizations to submit a grant application to the ARC in a total amount not to exceed $2,195,000 for West Atlanta Street Trail. We request the Board of Commissioners adopt a resolution authorizing the submission of a Transportation Improvement Program grant application to the Atlanta Regional Commission for preliminary engineering, acquisition of required right-of-ways, and construction of the West Atlanta Street Trail. Uh, Commissioner Burrell. Yes. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Call a question. And it passes five to zero. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Jim. Uh, we're going on to tab 13 and uh, public services. Oh, Helen. Yes. So, Chairman, Commissioner, County Manager, um, the library's agenda is to approve the contract for Biblioteca for Radio Frequency Identification System, or RFID, in the Cobb County Library System and Identify Project in the 2011 SPLAS program. On February 23, 2016, the Board of Commissioners authorized the appropriation of excess revenue collections from the 2011 SPLAS program included in the approved appropriation in the amount of $1.5 million for the RFID project. The RFID system combines security with more efficient tracking and handling of materials throughout the library, including easier and faster checkout and check-in of library materials, credit debit capability, and real-time circulation statistics and reports. We request that the Board of Commissioners approve a contract with Biblioteca in the amount of $1,429,760. $61.70 for the RFID project in the Cobb County Library System, a 2011 SPLAS project, and a form substantially similar to the, that provided on the separate cover and as approved by the County Attorney's Office. Authorize the corresponding budget transactions and further authorize the Chairman to execute the necessary documents. Commissioner Burrell. Uh, motion to approve. With pleasure. Do we have a second? Any discussion? Call the question. Passes five to zero. Thanks, Ellen. Oh, thank you. Okay. All right. I think uh, that's that's all the thirteen on the fourteen. And hello, Eddie. Good evening, Chairman, Commissioners, County Manager. Uh, this evening we have one item. Uh, Dr. Gulledge and I ask that the Board of Commissioners approve a contract for professional design services with Piper O'Brien Her Architects Incorporated in the amount of $156,427 for the new medical examiner's laboratory facility. 
This is an approved capital improvement project in the 2016 SPLOS program. We ask that you authorize the corresponding budget transfers and further authorize the chairman to execute the necessary documents. Piper O'Brien will provide for us facility needs assessment and bridging documents, architect site assessments on three different sites that we've chosen, hospital and medical consultant of what um, will go into the facility, and the cost et estimating to build it and furnish the new medical examiner's facility. Uh, Commissioner Weatherford. Thank you, and this is just the beginning, and hopefully uh, we'll get this going and uh, we can move forward with modernizing our facilities. Motion to approve as presented. Second. Any discussion? Call the question. Pass it 5 to 0. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going on to tab 15 and community development. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Dana Johnson, Cobb County Community Development, here to present to you a request to adopt an annexation response per our House Bill 49 Intergovernmental Agreement for property, which is 5.941 acres by the city of Ackworth on some unaddressed properties on Baker Road. As a bit of background, House Bill 49 is an intergovernmental agreement. There, are a little, there is a land use component to it, which provides a framework on how annexations are reviewed by the county and then approved by the cities. Um, there is also a land use dispute resolution process that is required through, through this intergovernmental agreement and through state code when the cities and the counties don't agree. Um, this is a, a picture of the subject parcel showing where it is located on Baker Road, completely surrounded by the city on three sides and Cherokee County to the north. Showing a little more detail about where we are here, there is a, a 5.39 unit per acre development to the right of the proposed uh, annexation, as well as a distribution center to the west, commercial properties to the south. Um, this property is, is low density residential within our future leaners category. It's currently zoned R20. Um, if rezoned by the city of Ackworth, it'll be in their senior living community, residential district, and this will include 92 independent senior, senior living apartments with amenities. This is an objectionable request through our house bill, through our agreements, but in light of the surrounding properties that are contained in the area, uh, staff and the district commissioner have issued a notice of non-objection, which three commissioners have signed off on. And with that, I'll ask the whole board to please uh, confirm um, what has occurred in regard to this particular annexation. Commissioner Weatherford. Motion to approve, sir, is presented. Second. Any discussion? Call the question. And it passes five to zero. Thanks, Thanks Dana. Sir. All right, on to uh, tab 16. So, get item three. Yeah, I gotta get. All right, um, I'm gonna read a couple of uh, recommended announcements here that I'm gonna seek board approval on. Uh, I'm pleased. I'm pleased tonight. I'm pleased tonight to announce and uh, present a recommendation uh, from the county manager, Mr. Hankerson for Mr. William Volkman to be appointed to the position of finance director and comptroller. Uh, Mr. Volkman has served 12 years of the finance department and assistant comptroller since 2012. And uh, I, I, re I move that the board of commissioners authorize appointed William Volkman as finance director and comptroller effective April 25th, 2017. Second. Thank you, Second. Uh, no discussion, call the question. And with a great deal of pressure, I announce it passes five to zero. Now get to work. Congratulations, Bill. Uh, the second one, then, the second uh, one again, I'm pleased to uh, present a recommendation from the county manager, Mr. Hankerson, for the creation of the Emergency Management Department under the Department of Public Safety and the appointment of Cassie Maslum as the Emergency Management Director. Ms. Maslum has served 16 years with the county, first as a police officer for seven years before moving to emergency management in 2008, where she has served as the deputy director since 2012. And with that, uh, I move that the board authorize the creation uh, of the emergency management department on the Department of Public Safety, safety 
Authorize the appointment of Cassie Masnum as the Emergency Management Director, grade 60, effective April 24, 2017, and further approve all subsequent accounting, payroll, and budgetary transactions associated with this departmental realignment. Second. Second. Call the question. And with a pleasure to announce it passes five to zero. Congratulations, Cassie. <laughs> okay, uh, the last, um, I'd like to recommend the interim appointment of county manager and a transition plan for the county manager responsibility. Uh, the count, Mr. Hankers has submitted his notice to retire as of uh, April 30th, 2017. However, Mr. Hankers has committed to be available to the county on as an entity to basis uh, through the adoption of the fiscal year 18 budget. I'm also pleased to recommend, present a recommendation for Mr. Robert Hosack to be appointed as the interim county manager, effective May, 2000, May 1st, 2017. Uh, Mr. Hosack has worked for the county for 27 years, and most recently as a community uh, development director before he retired in August of 2015. Uh, and with that, uh, I recommend that the board approve the appointment of Mr. Robert L. Hosack as interim county manager effective May 1st, 2017, and authorize me to set an interim salary and negotiate an employment contract with Mr. Hosack for the Board of Commissioners approval and further authorize the engagement of Mr. David Hankerson as a consultant effective June 1st, 2017, at the rate to be negotiated pursuant to professional service agreement and form acceptable to the county attorney. Second. 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 Any discussion? With that, I call the question. Passes five to zero. Mr. Hosack, would the worst kept secret in the history of Cobb County please come to the front? <laughs> Please uh, go to the podium. And I just simply want to say that you have, uh, to say you have some big shoes to fill is an understatement. Uh, we're delighted to have you on board. Um, you have an incredible legacy to, uh, to fulfill and continue in the presence of Mr. Hangerson. I'm delighted to see that you two will be working in partnership uh, through an unspecified time in the future. But we want to welcome you, welcome your years of experience to the county. And uh, we look forward to the product that um, you, Mr. Hanks, will produce uh, until uh, and he departs to his, uh, to his future employment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I wanted to acknowledge Please. Mr. Hankerson. Um, don't think I really ever would have got to this position without working with him for 27 years. And I just also, one, would like to congratulate Mr. Hankerson, but two, I think it's a testimony that um, he's willing to to stay behind and he's doing it simply because he knows it's the right thing and that's the way that Mr. Hankerson has always operated, sir. Thank you, Mr. Hankerson. Thank, thank you for your kind words and again, congratulations. And then the final tab, I believe, is 18. Hope I'm right about this. Except for the commissioner comments, of course. Okay, so um, my member would like to move to appoint uh, Carmen Hughes to the Hospital Authority of Cobb County for a term balance to expire on August 7, 2020. Uh, this appointment will replace uh, Miss Nancy, uh, Nancy Arnold. Do we hear a second? I have a second. Any discussion? Call the question. I'm going to pass this five to zero. Next, I'd like to uh, announce the uh, a reappointment of Roseanne Hall to the Housing Authority of Cobb County for a five-year term to expire on April 30th, 2020. Sorry. Commissioner Kerr, I'm sorry, I, I apologize, Commissioner Burrell. Uh, I, I spoke out of turn here. That's actually Commissioner Burrell's appointment, and I'll let her continue with the rest of them. Okay. I, I would like to uh, Approve the reappointment of Roseanne Hall to the Housing Authority of Cobb County and also to approve the reappointment of Nathan Wade to the Recreation and Parks Board. Second. Good. We have to do them separate. 
Uh, oh, we have a motion to approve. Approve, call a question. Passes five to zero. Okay. Now I'm going to announce uh, the appointment of uh, L'Oreal Green to the Property Advisory Commission for a four year term to expire on December 31st, 2020. Uh, this appointment replaces uh, Mr. Bill Hilly. And then I'd like to, uh, I'd like to have you announce the next one. You do the next one. As one of my appointments to the Transit Advisory Board, I'd like to announce the reappointment of Sherry Newton to the Transit System Advisory Board. Okay, thank you. No vote required. No vote required. That's absolutely correct. And with that, I believe uh, we have the business done for tonight. Now I'll just go to Commissioner Comments. So I'll start with uh, Commissioner Ott tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have three um, for the folks in East Cobb, the food truck uh, Monday that was scheduled for this past Monday that was uh, postponed due to the weather. It is on May 1st from 5 to 8. You can come have some, I'm not sure what Happy Belly is, but that's what they're serving. And uh, Maine Lobster and some other great food. Um, also, just want to do a shout out to uh, some of our great employees, Donald Wells, Tanisha Bates, and Kim Rousseau, um, that spent some time with one of the folks from District 2. And uh, she, uh, Angel Brim wrote me a letter just making sure that I knew that they had spent a lot of time working with her. And then finally, want to uh, congratulate the Walton Chamber Music Society uh, for their performance at the Midwest Band and Orchestra Clinic, um, which was in Chicago. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Burrell. Thank you, sir. Um, I'd first like to thank all the business owners and citizens that attended the How to Do Business with Cobb seminar. Special thank you to Cobb County Purchasing, Cobb County School System, and all the county staff for continuing to work with our vendors and seeking opportunities um, for new business and small businesses to do business with the county. Uh, tomorrow night at the Sprayberry Chick-fil-A at Sandy Plains and Piedmont, Chick-fil-A is sponsoring a spirit night to raise money for the family that was... Um, the, whose house was destroyed with the, um, the plane crash that occurred on Vista Wood Drive. Uh, Norm and Barbara Keller are the owners, and they were at church when the um, crash occurred. They lost their home all their and all their possessions in this tragic event. Uh, Sprayberry High School Chick-fil-A at Sandy Plains and Piedmont will host a fundraiser to donate, donate to the Kellers. Uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday, April 26th, from 5 to 8. And 10% of the proceeds from that evening will go to the Kellers. So we ask that you come out and support this event. And we're very grateful to Chick-fil-A for their generosity and support and the community. On April 30th, Sunday, at 8 a.m. at Kennesaw State University, 390 Big Shanty Road. You can come and be a part of the Semper 5K. We have two Marines up here. Y'all need to get out and run um, <laughs> to celebrate the life of um, Lance Corporal Marine Skip Wells. His mom wants his memory to live on not only for his heroic death, but for the fun life he led. Join Kathy Wells and the rest of the family to celebrate his birthday and his love for America. You can register at tortoiseandthehairracing.com and proceeds will benefit the Lance Corporal Skip Wells Foundation. On May 13th at Cobb County Animal Shelter, is Captain Owen still here? Where did he leave? He left. Um, we'll have our next Forever Fest from 10 to 4, come to the animal shelter at 1060 Al Bishop Drive and take home your new best friend. And on May 18th, um, Zaxby's at Sandy Pl on Sandy Plains Road will be hosting a fundraiser for the Superior Pets for Patriotic Vets program that we started last year. And their proceeds will be going to um, provide supplies, pet supplies, 
for the dogs that are adopted from the animal shelter in partnership with our um, <coughs> Superior Pet Program. And that's May 18th, Thursday, May 18th, and theirs is all day from 10.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. Like yeah. <laughs> and last but not least, <coughs> on June the 10th, the Northeast Cobb Business Association is sponsoring their third annual 5K9 um, Saturday, June 10th at 8 a.m. This year's race proceeds will be used to support a service dog for an autistic child. To register as a runner or a sponsor, visit northeastcobba.com. Thank you all. No, just a big congratulations to all the... Um, county employees and directors and best wishes to the county manager. Commissioner Weatherford. Sir. Oh, is it my turn? It's your turn. I was taking a nap. I apologize. I uh, wanted to recognize the Cobb Fire and Emergency Services earned their third international uh, reaccreditation status. Congratulations to our fire department. This is the second award in the last six months when we received the ISO rating of one. So second to none, Cobb Public Safety and Cobb Fire. So thank you for all that you do there. Uh, we've talked about Mr. Hankerson a lot tonight. And on Thursday, April 27th, at the Cobb County Safety Village, named after him, will be a reception from 9 to 11. It's a drop-in, uh, bring food, money, and anything else that uh, you might think clothes since he's now retired and unemployed for a while. So, yeah, hand good. <laughs> so uh, that's from 9 to 11. And stop by and say thank you for all he's done for this county. That's an opportunity. And finally, uh, Cobb Safety Village will have a uh, family fun safety day this Saturday, April 29th, from 9 to 1 p.m. on Saturday. So take advantage of that. It'd be a good event for all. And any other items, please see my newsletter or all other commissioners' newsletters. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Cupid. Thank you, Chairman. Just um, quite briefly, um, we'll, our Congressman David Scott will have his annual job fair on Friday, April 28th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Georgia International Convention Center. And included with that will be a small business forum from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, also, our Cobb County Police Athletic League will hold a free soccer camp for children ages 8 through 17, and that will be at Traymore Park off of East West Connector on May 8th through the 9th, and um, the time is from 6 to 8 p.m., and you can register at facebook.com backslash Cobb Pal, which is Cobb P-A-L, or you can register at cobbcounty.org backslash pal. Um, also want to give some recognition to um, the weekly cleanup events that we've been having in South Cobb. I want to thank Barry Krebs for his efforts. He's both a member of South Cobb Lions, which has been an integral um, part of our cleanup um, events in the county as well as a part of Keep Cobb Beautiful. This weekend they had a cleanup event with Vinings Village Civic Group and the Vinings Rotary um, Group. If you're interested in having a weekly cleanup near you, just contact our District 4 um, Commissioner's Office. Um, finally, we have a couple of um, road maintenance and paving projects throughout the district. want to uh, inform the residents who live off of Hiram Lithia Springs that there will be an active road repaving this week from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and to expect some delays as the roads will be narrowed to one lane. Also, um, we are going to have another road closure on Veterans <coughs> Memorial Bridge, and that will be Friday, um, this Friday, the 28th through at 8 p.m. through Monday, May 1st until 5 um, a.m. And just want you to be aware that we'll have a detour and plan to take additional time to go through that area. Those are all the comments I have tonight besides saying, again, congratulations on your retirement, um, Manager Anderson. And I just simply want to, first of all, thank uh, Commissioners Cupid and Weatherford for the skillful way they handled the, uh, the tethering issue. It was a very sensitive issue, and I thought that the outcome was a re you know, result of you working with the staff and 
come up with the right word. So thank you for both of you. Um, I also want to thank uh, Mr. Hankerson. I know uh, there are just sometimes aren't enough words, but I think that you know in the short time we've worked together, we've had a lot of fun, and uh, and I hope that uh, that you go out with laughter in your heart, and uh, and but you you know you leave uh, you leave a, a legacy here that uh, this will reflect uh, your county uh, for decades to come because of what you and uh, the done with the board over that time. So thank you again for all you've done, and uh, Godspeed. And with that, I uh, declare this uh, this uh, meeting in adjournment. Thank you.